order. I'd like to recognize and appreciate that we're holding this hearing within the traditional territories of the Chishat and Hupachasset First Nations. I'm grateful for that. My name is Penny Cody. I'm the director for Sprout Lake Electoral Area. I'd like to introduce you to the ACRD planning staff, Mr. Mike Erg, manager of planning and development, Mr. Alex Dyer, planning, planning manager, and Kathy MacArthur, planning assistant is on screen. Thank you. Uh, this hearing is being held in the ACRD boardroom and electronically by Zoom. It is being recorded and is live streaming on the ACRD website. Would staff please provide direction and instruction on how to participate in this hearing? Happy to. Thank you, Director Grote. So uh, first of all, thank you everybody for participating tonight. We have a mix of participants online as well as in the boardroom here. Um, I just want to quickly highlight the, uh, uh, the tools we have in place that will uh, allow us to uh, keep meeting moving along. If you are watching the live stream online on the website um, and you wish to join the meeting, the details on how to connect are available on the uh, Zoom meeting invite document that's linked on the public hearing page. So if you are participating online, you have the option to turn on or off your video or mute or, and unmute your audio so other participants can see you and hear you. Uh, we ask that you keep your audio muted at all times unless you're, uh, you're called to speak, just to reduce the background noise. There will be an opportunity to speak uh, after staff introduce the application and the applicants have an opportunity to respond. For those participating in person here in the boardroom, uh, we ask that you use the microphone system that we have at the, the tables before speaking by pressing the little silver button on the base to turn on your microphone or at the, uh, the podium in the, in the middle of the room there. Uh, that will focus the camera on you and then, and then allow those on Zoom to hear you as well. So when the chair calls upon any members of the public to, uh, to comment on the bylaw, we ask that you either put your hand up or call out that you'd like to speak. Once you have been recognized by the chair, uh, we ask that you state your name and address followed by your comments or questions. If you are online, you will unmute yourself at that point. And if you are in person in the boardroom, you'll uh, either walk up to the, the podium and, and press the button or, or use one of the microphones at your seat. Um, I also want to highlight that when using Zoom, there's a, a chat feature access from the controls on your screen if you'd like to make a comment or ask a question at any time. All comments will be addressed by staff during the public hearing, so feel free to use that to add anything you would like to have considered as we move along. These comments will be brought forward when the, uh, the chair asks for uh, public comments. There will also be a final opportunity prior to the end of the public hearing to ask any final questions or make any final comments on the application. Thank you. Thank you for that. The subject of this hearing is bylaws P1436 and P1437. Bylaw P1436 is a Sprout Lake official community plan amendment bylaw to redesignate a portion of the subject property from the residential use to commercial use and, in, and include the property within the development per, permit area three. Objectives for Form and character bylaw P1437 is a zoning atlas amendment bylaw to rezone the upland portion of the subject property from rural A2 district to tourist commercial C6 district. If you have questions or comments about any other unrelated topics, I'd ask that you contact the regional district staff after this hearing has been terminated. Would staff now read out the notice of the hearing? Thank you. Okay. Public hearing for residents and, and property owners in Electoral Area D, Spro Lake, has been scheduled to consider bylaws P1436 and P1437. Hearing details Monday, March 27, 2023, at 7 p.m. Public hearing for bylaws P1436 and P1437, 10720 Lakeshore Road, Spro Lake Landing Incorporated, property owner. Electronic call in or in person attendance at the Alberta and Clackamas Regional District ACRD office, 3008 5th Avenue, Port Alberta, BC. The subject property is legally described as Lot A, District Lot 204, Alberni District, and Section 91, Clockwood District Plan 31720. Bylaws P1436 P and P1437 are necessary to facilitate development of up to 15 cottages as an extension of the existing hotel, restaurant, and commercial uses. Bylaw P1436 is a Sprout Lake Official Community Plan Amendment bylaw to redesignate a portion of the subject property from residential use to commercial use and include within the development permit area three objectives for form and character. 
and bylaw P1437 is a zoning atlas amendment bylaw to rezone the upland portion of the subject property from rural A2 district to tourist commercial C6 district. The public hearing will be held by the director for the electoral area D, the alternate director or the chairperson of the regional district. The board resolution making this delegation bylaws P1436 and P1437 and all relevant background documents are available for review in the ACRD office here and are available as supplementary information at www.acrd.bc.ca slash events slash 27-3-2023. This public hearing will be recorded and live streamed on the ACRD website. Planning staff are available to answer questions in person through email or by phone during normal office hours, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday, March 15th, 2023, March 27th, 2023, excluding statutory holidays. Now, anyone who feels their interest in property will be affected by the proposed bylaws will be afforded a reasonable opportunity to be heard. If you wish to participate in the public hearing in person, electronically or by phone, full instructions to do so can be provided by contacting planning staff by email at planning at acrd.bc.ca or by phone at 250-720-2700. In addition, participation instructions are included in the supplementary information available at www.acrd.bc.ca slash events slash 27-3-2023. Public hearing will be conducted from the ACRD office located at 3008 5th Avenue, Port Alberni, BC. Written correspondence can be submitted to the ACRD by one of the following methods, hard copy delivered to the ACRD office in person or by mail, an email sent to planning at acrd.bc.ca, or fax sent to 250-723-1327. You know, email or fax correspondence will only be considered received if receipt confirmation is provided by ACRD staff. Written submissions provided in advance of the public hearing must be received by the ACRD no earlier than 8 a.m. on March 15th, 2023, and no later than 4 p.m. on March 27th, 2023, to ensure their inclusion in the public record. Correspondence submitted ahead of the public hearing outside of these parameters will not be included. Thank you. Thank you. The purpose of this public hearing is to respectfully receive input, written and verbal, from any person who believes that their interest in property is affected by the bylaws. The Board of Directors will receive full minutes of this hearing before voting on the bylaws. Staff have taking, are taking minutes that summarize the issues raised. Please speak clearly to ensure accuracy. Staff, please introduce the proposal. Okay. Or me. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to begin with the agency referral comments. Uh, the agency referral response we received at the, uh, the first public hearing noted no objections to the application or recommended that the rezoning application be approved subject to conditions outlined in those responses. I note that um, highlighting a few of the responses, uh, the response to the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure recommended that the applicant provide additional road right of way dedication along Lakeshore which has been initiated by the applicants. Uh, the response from the Ministry of Forest, Lands, Natural Resource Operations and Rural Development, as it was called at the time, advised that a water license uh, would be re required for the development of a private water system. And then the response from Island Health detailed the requirements for drinking water, uh, sewage disposal and the potential subdivision of the site. So a copy of those agency referral responses are available public review uh, at the back of the room here. Uh, are linked on the ACRD website and will form part of the public hearing report that will be considered by the board. Uh, there were also 46 letters of correspondence and petition letters received from the public ahead of the public hearing, uh, with 28 of those letters expressing general opposition to the application and 17 letters expressing general support. There was also a petition letter signed by uh, three residents that expressed general opposition as well. Again, a copy of that public correspondence is available for public review on the ACRD website. Hard copies are available at the back of the room, and uh, they will form part of that public hearing report as well that will be considered by the board. So the application that we have uh, before you today, uh, the property owners are applying to rezone a portion of the Sprout Lake Landing property from, as you've heard, rural A2 district to tourist commercial C6 district in order to accommodate up to 15 cottage-style accommodation units as an extension of the existing hotel restaurant and retail store or cafe complex. Um, the portion of the property that uh, is under application to be rezoned is located on the upland portion accessed off Lakeshore Road, south of the Winer Creek Bridge. Uh, this portion of the property is approximately 4.3 acres. 
uh, in size and is vacant uh, aside from the on-site sewage disposal infrastructure for the existing commercial uses located on the property. The proposed cottage units would be limited to 1,200 square feet in floor area and could be used as residences uh, or managed as short vacation rentals under the, uh, the proposed C6 zoning. A bit of background on how we got to this point. A first public hearing was held for this application in March 2022. Many of you were in attendance at that, that meeting. Uh, the bylaws received second and third readings on uh, June 8, 2022. After further discussion, the board resolved to hold a second public hearing uh, for this application and delegated the second public hearing and rescinded third reading of the bylaws at the October 13th, 2022 board meeting. Uh, included with the background information, for public review online on our website and in hard copy form at the back of the boardroom are five reports that were considered by the board for this rezoning application if you're interested in reading them. Uh, I just wanna quickly finish by highlighting the, uh, the conditions of approval that were applied by the board uh, when the bylaws were given first reading and added to following uh, the first public hearing in March, 2022. These include the applicant agreeing to a covenant limiting the number of cottages to a maximum of 15 units restricting the floor area of each cottage to 1,200 square feet of habitable space, as I mentioned, uh, including adequate green space on the area to be rezoned, which uh, in includes a 15 meter vegetated buffer along Winer Creek and a three meter screening buffer adjacent to neighboring properties on Lakeshore Road. And finally, that the proposed cottage development access to Sprout Lake is guaranteed through the um, um, existing property and the uh, existing improvements located on the property. That restricted covenant has been registered to the property title. Uh, another requirement was the confirmation from a, a registered on-site wastewater practitioner that the property is capable of, com of accommodating on-site sewage disposal for those additional 15 units. We'll highlight that uh, a letter from MSR Solutions Incorporated dated November 7th, 2022 has been submitted uh, by the applicants, which, which analyzed the uh, anticipated soil conditions and provides recommendations relating to the design and installation of a sewer system to meet the Island Health's sewer system regulations. Uh, again, a copy of that letter is available here uh, in the boardroom. It's linked on our website as well. And the letter will form part of the public hearing report that will be considered by the board. Some of the referrals uh, that the board had mentioned, the, uh, a requirement was the referral to Island Health to confirm the operational requirements for a private water system to service the cottage development. Uh, the referral response received from Island Health highlights the need for a construction permit required for the development of any drinking water infrastructure at the site. This is something that's typically dealt with at the building permit stage if a, uh, if a development proceeds. And so to that, uh, the referral to the Sprout Lake Fire Department to confirm that, that adequate fire protection can be provided to the cottage development. Again, that referral response from the Sprout Lake Fire Department indicated that their interests were, were unaffected. But uh, the technical requirements for things like fire separation and uh, how the buildings must be built are dealt with at the building permit stage should the application proceed. So I think I'll stop there and I'll pass back to you. Thank you. Thank you. So at this point, does the applicant like to add anything to this presentation? No? Okay. Okay. Good evening, Madam Chair. Um, any of the area directors who are attending virtually, um, staff, members of the public, thank you for coming. My name is Gerard LeBlanc. I um, am a land use consultant. I've been practicing on Vancouver Island since 1990. Um, yesterday, I was just thinking about where I'd work, and I've actually worked in every regional district on the island. So it's kind of a Kind of interesting how this puts things in, in perspective. Um, I've been in 
Mr. Erg's position and a couple of municipalities and in a regional district. Um, so I appreciate the process that we have to go through and um, concerns voiced by the public, of course. I'd like to point out that if you see me turning my head, it's not because of disinterest or anything. I have the invisible disability. I'm very hard of hearing. I do wear hearing aids. So sometimes I just have to turn to hear a bit better. So I hope that's uh, okay with people. Um, I'd also like to note that um, Mr. Mike Seymour from MSR Solutions is attending the meeting virtually and he will be able to answer questions related to septic treatment and effluent dispersal. Uh, I'm certainly not um, qualified to do that. I have uh, um, some knowledge of the environmental um, review. I do have a certificate in environmental assessment. Um, I've worked with a number of transportation engineers and I've reviewed the report that they have here. So I can, I can speak to that, but not with any transportation engineering expertise. So I, I just want to qualify it that way. Um, I want to thank Mr. Dyer for introducing the application. Um, there's a lot of information that he has mentioned that we have on the screen. Uh, so without further ado, we'll go forward. I'm sure everybody here is familiar with the site location. We quote unquote borrowed this illustration from one of the ACRD reports to show the location of the site at um, roughly the corner of Highway 4 and Lakeshore Road, um, <clears throat> adjacent to uh, Dallas Cafe and uh, basically across from, or diagonally across from uh, drink waters, as well as some other commercial zone property in, uh, in the area. Um, lot A is um, sort of split up in different ways. There's a, I don't know, I guess the arrow function doesn't work to indicate. Um, oh, so there's a, a section uh, across the highway from Dulles, which um, is not part of this application that's vacant. Um, the site where Dulles and Drinkwaters are located are identified there as well as uh, Weiner Creek and the subject property, which is um, forms part of this, this application. Uh, this is a site plan of the subject site. Um, it shows it as having 1.84 hectares, roughly 4.54 acres in size and uh, dimensions of the property are shown. Um, it's there for information so that um, people who are um, in attendance here can see it and those who are viewing it online hopefully can as well. Uh, these are the parcels or the, uh, always torn to call it a parcel, but portions of the property uh, of lot A that are designated commercial. Uh, the um, the other portions of the site, which are in uh, hashed uh, lines in the previous slide, are uh, designated uh, either uh, residential or uh, the site across the road is actually designated commercial, but zone day two, as is the subject property. Uh, these two images show the OCP designations and the zoning on the site, which Mr. Dyer has uh, explained quite clearly. In 2021, there was an original concept put together uh, showing 21 cottages on the site. Um, the image to the left illustrates that concept. The current concept for 2023 shows uh, 15 cottages and a sort of horseshoe configuration with one access coming off of Lakeshore Road. Um, there's also um, the protected area for Winer Creek is shown there and um, proposed pedestrian pathway of Mr. Dyer uh, referenced earlier is shown along Lakeshore Road. This is a detail of that plan. Um, you can see, um, I wish I could, I wish I could uh, uh, use the mouse to identify the features that I want to point out. 
but adjacent to Winer Creek, which is at the top of the screen, is a 15 meter riparian area, uh, which also has a covenant on it for vegetation protection and prohibiting removal of vegetation with the exception of invasive species. And uh, there are some invasive species on the lot. I, I'll show you some photos of that shortly. Um, there's a 30 meter building setback from Winer Creek and uh, from the high watermark of Winer Creek and the cottages are well beyond that. Uh, going from the center of the cottage site to Lakeshore Road is a pathway, a pedestrian pathway, uh, so that um, guests can access either Della's or drink waters or take a walk along uh, Lakeshore Road or go uh, to Sprout Lake uh, for swimming activities, uh, uh, whatever they, they choose. Uh, the green space that is there falls well within the requirements of uh, the official community plan and um, is part of that development. As mentioned earlier by Mr. Dyer, the, the property has a covenant on it which limits it to 15 cottages. Um, no more can be put on. It's registered on title, and uh, that's, that's the limit. This next slide looks very similar uh, to the previous one. Uh, unfortunately, the arrows are probably not very legible, but um, what it's intended to do on the south side of the property at the bottom of the screen are some arrows that show that the setbacks from the property line to adjacent residences uh, are between 100 to 160 meters from the property line. For the properties to the east, they're more like 40 to 60 meters from the property line. Uh, the cottages are somewhat further distant from the residences as well. Um, there will be fencing and buffering on three sides of the property in addition to the covenant area, covenanted area adjacent to Vinyl Creek. And um, fencing uh, will be included on the south side as, as well in order to protect um, uh, the privacy of adjacent landowners and the residential use. These are some of the these are some pictures of the conditions of the site. There's quite a bit of uh, construction debris, some blast rock, uh, some no post barriers uh, on the site. Uh, the picture at the bottom left shows you some of the broom that's located on the site. And the picture at the bottom right illustrates uh, some of the knot weight that's on the property. Uh, those two need to be removed and they need to be um, how do I put it, managed in such a way that they're not present on the site in the future. That's uh, um, a requirement that um, Sprout Lake Landing wishes to um, respect and re maintain. This uh, slide shows in a bit more detail the, the riparian setback to Winer Creek. It's that yellow area that, or the area that's shaded yellow on this plan. Um, between that yellow area and uh, to the, I know I'm going to get the cardinal direction wrong here. I'm just going to say to the left, is a dashed line that represents a 30 meter setback of cottages to the high water mark of, uh, uh, or from the high water mark of, of Lyon Creek that can't be located any closer than that. The shaded area. Um, not only uh, is uh, a covenant to protect the existing vegetation and um, uh, prohibit its removal, except for invasive species, uh, it's also a riparian setback for Winer Creek. Um, so there's the 50 meter riparian setback, there's the covenanted area, both of these are within that yellow area, plus there's a 30, uh, pardon me, 30 meter setback. Uh, from Winer uh, Creek to the cottages. They can't be any closer than 30 meters and they, they are not. Um, this is where perhaps Mr. Seymour will uh, um, 
will 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 apply his expertise, the the sewage treatment and dispersal system. There were three that were identified: conventional defense treatment and this uh, raised mound, raised sand mound. Uh, the only way, well, I could have shown any of them. I sh I show this one because this is the type of system I have at my house, that my wife and I have at our house uh, in Shirley. And um, its house was built in 2006, and it's been functioning very well since then. But um, uh, I, I have no expertise in this uh, field other than knowing that our system works, and this is an alternative that was pointed out in the report. Watt Consulting completed a traffic impact uh, assessment of, of the property and um, considered the number of cottages, the potential traffic that might be generated from them, uh, estimated um, peak time levels of traffic, uh, check-in and check-out times basically, and also assessed the different uh, alternatives for access to the property. Um, a, B, and C are shown. C is the, the, the let's call it the existing access road that's uh, adjacent to um, the residential uses to the south. Um, it was the quote unquote, my word, poorest location because of sight lines and visibility. Both Access options A and B would work. The concept plan that you saw uses access option B. Uh, the sight lines and sight distances are improved considerably over option C. And that, as I said, is what's been used to um, uh, demonstrate or show where the access will be to to the cottages. In their assessment, Watt Consultant uh, determined that there would be uh, an average increase of six vehicles per hour during peak hours of uh, the operation of the cottages. So um, their conclusion uh, going from memory was that the impact on traffic would be, or of the cottages on traffic on Lakeshore Road would be negligible. Excuse me. This slide um, illustrates the walkway, the pathway along the uh, frontage of the property. Um, it was um, the subject of discussion with uh, staff and with the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure. And what has occurred is that there has been uh, a land transfer. There will be um, a dedication, a four, a four meter wide dedication along the frontage of Lakeshore Road to pr provide a pedestrian pathway to be built at ACRD standards. Um, the area, the gravel area, you're probably all familiar with adjacent to Dallas, uh, formed part of that land exchange. And that area is going to be managed and landscaped, uh, and um, there will be parking provided on that uh, particular um, part of uh, of uh, the property that has now been transferred to uh, Spoke or will be. It hasn't. I'm sorry, that hasn't been finalized with Ministry of Transportation Infrastructure yet. It's in the works, um, and. Uh, that's what's proposed for those areas. Um, the pathway will hopefully be at grade and be accessible to everyone, notwithstanding their mobility challenges. So uh, this is again uh, a concept of the site, concept plan of the site. And I just want to leave it up while I go through uh, some notes here uh, that I have. Um, it's not just the land use per se that we've assessed or I've assessed in reviewing this uh, this application and the needs of um, uh, for justification. 
One of the documents I looked at was the Albert, or the Albert Stockwell Regional District Strategic Plan that identifies that the economy is, is in transition. One that's going to um, tourism, uh, light industry, agriculture, and other uses. Um, the 50, 15 cottages will help strengthen the tourism sector in, um, in the ACRD and will contribute to and add to the diversity and inventory of quality tourist accommodation in this area. Um, it's going to provide permanent and part-time employment in addition to what's um, in addition to what's uh, provided through uh, drink waters and dollars. And it's hoped, maybe anticipated, that this portion of the Sproad Lake electoral area and the, and the regional district will become a focus for tourists as opposed to a pit stop for points further west. But it's a, it's, it's, it's a good place to visit and a good place to, to be at. Um, I don't think I need to go in. I had some notes on sustainability and environmental objectives. I don't think I have to go into a lot of detail on them. Uh, Mr. Dyer has covered some of them. I've covered some others in, um, in my presentation. The one point I want to make is that the covenant area, covenant area the riparian area, the protected area will not be available to cottage guests. It's, uh, it needs to be preserved and protected. Um, the other point I want to make is that the location of the cottages in reviewing some of the background documentation that the regional district has, the location of the cottage was selected to place it, place them away from Sprout Lake due to predicted water level rises of the lake and to better um, preserve, maybe protect public health and safety of, of any of the guests that are attended the, or um, registered at the cottage, staying at the cottages. Um, from my review of the OCP, um, <coughs> excuse me, the cottages and their location there, the redesignation of the site, uh, it follows a few of the policies of the existing and the draft stroke like OCP particularly the statement that supports the expansion and location of tourism and neighborhood services in the West Bay area. Um, I referenced the um, proposed uh, pathway. Uh, it's going to be um, dedicated as a community amenity to uh, the regional district. Um, the the um, graveled area adjacent to Delos, they said uh, they said will be managed into a more attractive area. Um, <clears throat> the cottages have been cited in the manner so as to avoid the DPA1 area, the riparian area, and they will be subject to a formal character uh, commercial development permit uh, requirement. Um, <clears throat> the, the density uh, of the cottage on the site is not great. Uh, it is, uh, in keeping with the rural character of the area, in my experience, and my opinion, and, um, and, and it would, would um, in amending the, the OCP and the zoning bylaw, uh, make the use uh, consistent with both those documents and further controlled by the Section uh, 219 Covenant, Restrictive Covenant on the property. Uh, We've used uh, a clustering concept with uh, uh, the uh, the cottages, which reflects, although it's in another section of the OCP, it reflects a policy that's within the official community, the Sport Lake official community plan, and um, it, it enables the, um, the the cottage design to better fit within the neighborhood, but yet uh, serve the purpose of accommodating tourist accommodation. Uh, the cottages are going to be part of the Sproat Lake Landing Resort Hotel operation. Um, I believe uh, Mr. Higgs submitted uh, a letter today outlining uh, the intent for the cottages. 
but also say state and also stating that they will be managed by um, by the hotel and hotel staff. Um, we feel that um, many of the questions that uh, were related to vehicle traffic, to sewage treatment and effluent disposal, and consistency with the OCP were, were met. Uh, referral agency comments, as noted by Mr. Dyer, uh, have been, were received, and not two uh, only conditions uh, were applied. There were no objections to uh, to the development. So, in conclusion, um, this concept and this application is consistent with the ACRD strategic plan objectives and policies. And once adopted, uh, hopefully adopted, the cottage use of the site will be consistent with the Spoke Lake OCP. There are significant community amenities that are going to be provided, including that walkway and the improved uh, landscape area next to Dallas. These amenities are in addition to the existing and ongoing uh, moorage that is uh, provided at no cost to uh, the Sport Lake Dragon Boat Society at one of the docks, as well as the Sport Lake Outrigger Canoe Club. I don't know if that's a type of the right name of that club, but that's the best one I could come up with. Uh, and they're provided with free moorage. Um, the total new community amenity contribution uh, for the trail and the parking, and this doesn't include the, the moorage at, at the um, at the docks, the existing mortgage is in the range of $125,000. So it's an investment in trying to be part of the community and providing for increased safety along uh, Lakeshore Road. Um, we feel that, um, speaking for Sport Lake Landing and as their land use consultant, that this is an appropriate use of the site in this location. And um, we're hopeful that the amendments that have been applied for uh, will be approved and that a recommendation of that uh, note is forwarded to the regional court. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add at this point? No, Madam Chair, thank you for the opportunity. Okay, thank you. So yeah, we'll get that off the screen and okay. Okay, thank you. So now at this point, uh, we will hear from members of the public. So with respect, please wait until You've been recognized by me. State your name and address before beginning. Uh, and with, with your speaking, when you're speaking, you're speaking to myself. If there's any other side conversations that are happening, I ask you to please take them outside until you're recognized by the chair. Uh, and so at this time, we will hear from anyone wishing to speak for the first time, allowing for second comments after everyone has spoken for the first time. Yes, Bar uh, chair recognizes. Yes, sure. You can you can speak from where you are or the podium. Good evening. Uh, my name is Barbara Smith, and I I uh, live at one hundred seven hundred seven Lakeshore Road. Um, thank you for the opportunity to the staff and the directors uh, for the opportunity to hear um, what we, the community, I'm speaking for the community, uh, for a number of community members um, right at this point, because um, we ha I have a petition here that 69 members have signed, and um, I, ha I will give it to you um, tonight, um, but I'd like to read out the petition first, okay? Um, but first, this petition was was partially put together as a result of the previous um, public hearing, and it was put together by members of the neighborhood of Sprout Lake. 
Um, we all got together, we all conferred, we all looked at it, we vetted it, and put it together. This copy tonight is an update, and it's an update from some of our meetings with the Sprout Lake Landing people. Um, and we, uh, we bring it to you here in good faith. Um, we um, understand that um, um, that we have we have these um, all of these um, signatures, and so I'd like to start just by by um, um, uh, reading it out to you. So uh, the petition is for, to the ACRD, March the twenty seventh, two thousand and twenty three. We, the community members, have provided this petition as a protest against the proposed rezoning of Sprout Lake Landing property. RD 221009 at 10695 Lakeshore Road that will allow for 15 and the, um, as the gentleman said, is cottages. We refer to it now, from now on, as homes. They're not really cottages at all. They're 12,000, 1,200 square feet. So with two bedrooms each. And um, recently, community members have had individual meetings with the owners of Sport Lake Landing at their request. They denied us the uh, opportunity to meet with them as a group. They far preferred to meet with us individually. So we, we honored the request and did so. Comments from these meetings are in italics or bold within the petition. Um, as they presented additional information to the rezoning application and proposed covenant restrictions. We have a number of major concerns with this development that are the deviation from the Sprout Lake official community plan. This development obviously deviates from the um, official community plan for Sprout Lake in a number of major ways. The 3.2 general planning policy state that it is the regional district's policy to, in policy 3.2.12, 3 maintain a minimum lot size of one hectare for subdivision purposes in all land use designation if the lot is serviced with an on site well and septic system. The minimum lot size may re be reduced to 0.24 hectare if the lot is serviced by a community or communal water or sewer system. Policy 3.2.15 promote the development of land in a manner that suits and is appropriate to the site upon which it will be built. And policy 3.2.19 is to encourage land use patterns that do not compromise the ecolo ecological integrity and rural character of the plan area. The land density, the land density proposed by the property far exceeds and contravenes the Sprope Lake Community Official Plan, which had much community input and debate. Um, members of the community spent almost two years going through the, uh, the official uh, community plan. Um, currently, although the proposal is for two two bedroom homes, the Sprout Lake Landing owners have mentioned to a number of community members that they are planning to build three bedroom homes. Now they do, had not said whether whether how many would be two bedroom or how many would be three bedroom. We don't know the configuration. Regardless, this new proposal could up the density from four to six people per home to six to eight people per home with the potential for more vehicles, more boats, heavier use of water, sewage, et cetera. We, the community are concerned about this new high density proposal and that the owners can change the density at their whim. Traffic. There's currently considerable amount of traffic on this section of Lakeshore Road. Building another 15 homes with one or two vehicles each on a small parcel of land will add to the congestion. The entrance to the proposed development property cuts across a proposed pedestrian pathway. And for vehicles going from the property to Lakeshore Road, there's a steep area before the pedestrian path. We have major concerns with vehicles that potentially could be pulling boats and trailers, making the sharp right or left turn up or down the entrance way to the property and effectively blocking the pedestrian pathway and oncoming traffic. Parking. In the proposal, there appears to be no parking in each unit, but in a common area with an allowance 
of one parking space per unit. Now that was the original one. However, no additional parking has been, been provided for guests, two vehicle families, boat trailers, jet skis, et cetera, that would be part of this, I'm sure. We are concerned that because of the lack of parking mentioned above, the shoulder of the road will be used. This road is narrow and is not conducive to roadside parking. Um, I did, as an aside, I did hear that they were going to have extra parking at, at Dallas, but that looks like a huge parking lot right on the corner of that, of that land. Because the proposal, this is for the land, lake access and dock usage. Because the proposal is for homes which are typically for seasonal use, lake access would seem to be of paramount interest to the tenants. However, no lake access has been provided for this proposal. However, the Sprout Lake Landing owners have stated that the patrons would use the hotel dock. We are concerned that this would overburden the dock, even though it has been recently tremendously extended. Potentially, the dock could be used for 60 plus people, 15, 15 homes with two bedrooms, and additionally, hotel guests, day visitors to the cafe, restaurant, and pub. This use for boats, jet skis, swimming, could be noisy, polluting, and congested for the environment and the adjacent estuary and neighborhood. According to the owners of Sprout Lake Landing, no other lake access points will be allowed by their tenants. Thus, another concern is how will the owners monitor or dictate that the use of the public lands uh, cannot be used by the renters. Additionally, the Sprout Lake Landing owners have stated to community, land, community members that they intend to add eight to 10 boat slips to the extended, already extended dock. This is very disturbing information because this indicates that the dock will have many boats contributing to, to the turbidity and pollution of our drinking water and the natural life in the estuary and creek. Also, when does it become a marina and need to be licensed accordingly? Sewage treatment. Now this is a real uh, gem, this one. The current sewer treatment facility in place has been deemed to be adequate by the hotel owner. However, during high capacity times in the summer, what looks like effluent appears in the ditch along the roadside at the front of the property. And there's a video evidence of this provided by um, C law of sewage being spewed into the adjacent ditch. Island Health was informed about the sewage leakage by a community member. However, a Sproat Lake Landing owner pumped raw sewage into the bushes in order to empty their sewage tank before Island Health could put a dye into the system to test it. A community member noticed this and told them it was not acceptable, but the pumping continued. We have pictures that detail this. A company in town is available for pumping 24 seven. Although the owner stated repeatedly to a number of community members that this dumping of raw sewage was prudent behavior as he is an engineer with years of wastewater treatment experience, Island Health and the Professional Engineers Association do not agree with this decision. They both deemed that the dumping of raw sewage adjacent to a salmon spawning creek and where residents get drinking water is not a recommended practice. No information regarding the capacity of the current treatment plant has been given on the proposal of how this adequacy was calculate, calculated. For example, how much capacity is needed by the hotel and how much capacity is needed for each two to three bedroom home. Um, the previous uh, speaker said that he has his own home with a, um, a, a particular treatment, but we understand there's only going to be one treatment. So what would happen for, for 15 homes? So on to the water system. No specifics are provided regarding the proposed potable water system and source. We also are concerned regarding the impact of further development on the water quality of the lake. Many of us get our household water from the lake and depending on it continuing to be potable and safe for our usage. We also have problems with filtering because of the boats, et cetera. 
Environmental implications. As this is an application for a rezoning, it should be subject to environmental review. The following are some of our environmental concerns. The estuary of Binder Bay is a delicate balance of animals, birds, fish, and plant life. Coho spawn in Winder Creek, blue herons nest nearby, bald eagles hunt for prey, beavers build their dams, and otters frolic in the shallow waters. Sprout Lake Landing uses pictures of just that wildlife that I've, I've mentioned as their uh, publicity on their website. So it's worth their while to try and protect it. The estuary is also a flyway for birds migrating north and south in seasons. Red-winged blackbirds and loons are often heard. It is essential that the estuary be protected and safeguarded. The additional number of potential boats and road traffic will no doubt add additional pollution to the estuary. Currently, pop and beer cans, plastic containers, plastic wrap, bags, and other debris are seen floating away from the dock. As well, there appear to be no garbage pails on the dock that would, of course, need to be wasp-proof and cleaned daily. Paint cans and construction debris is evident in the creek. Although this may have been from the previous owner, nevertheless, no attempt has, has been made to clean this up by the current owner. And, and there's no evidence of that, that they are involved in cleaning up anything past their dock or the, or the creek. The roadway can also be at times littered with debris that seems to be packaging from the cafe. Sprout Lake Landing appears to clean up just what is in front of their property with no attempt to check the roadway for debris from their premises. The owners are well aware of noxious and invasive plants on their property. No attempt to clear broom or knotweed not has been undertaken. Creek access. There's no information particularly on the proposal as to any access allowed to the creek either for household water or recreation. Change in use. In our research, the community has come to understand that typically developers build a certain number of homes, maybe half the number in the proposal. These homes are then sold to pay for the remaining homes to be built. The sold homes could become strata homes that subsequently could be sublet as Airbnb and short-term rentals. Um, I would challenge anybody to consider having 15 Airbnbs in their backyard. One would be doable perhaps, but not 15. Is there a problem here? Okay. Yeah, sorry, I, think, I, just, I thought that we weren't supposed to do that. That we were told not to have side, side conversations. So, as the chair, uh, if Penny needs some clarification, we certainly can and, and, and will always do that. And we just want to clarify some, some questions about chat. And once you're done, um, Alex, Alex will address that. Thanks. Okay, I, I fit, that needs to happen. That's that's quite all right. But I'd like to know. Okay, if I'm speaking. Thank Sorry, you. I Thank apologize. You. I had a question. There's chat happening, and I just wanted to know if it was for the record. Um, just to make sure that, uh, and the staff will advise after you're finished. Okay. So at least, just to to uh, to reiterate, um, the sold homes could very well become Airbnbs, and we have, we're very concerned about that. Short-term rentals are not what we want in our neighborhood, and certainly not 15 of them. Thus, these homes will no longer be under the auspices of the Sprout Lake management. The community is concerned that the development, if it proceeds, will become, over time, a huge issue for the community in regards to noise, traffic, pollution, environmental de degradation, and change the integrity of the community. Additional lake access could be proposed by the Strata community as they would not have access to the Sprout Lake landing dock and traffic both vehicle and boat will increase tremendously. Inequitable community process. 
Finally, we, the community neighbors, do not believe the rezoning process to be fair, equitable, and transparent. We as neighbors could not meet initially due to COVID and could only present our views in a non-personal way over Zoom, which at times had a faulty audio system. Furthermore, communication has been lax as we are not informed of meetings, particularly the June 8, 2022 meeting. I, I particularly um, was, was given the notice of the meeting that day. Clearly, emails have not been forwarded on to directors as, as much as we had anticipated, and, and because some of them had, did not have knowledge of the issues and concerns that have repeatedly communicated to ACRD staff through emails and telephone conversation. It has also appeared to us that the process is not transparent and equitable as underlying agenda has been biased towards development at any environmental cost to the community. And I would suggest as well that this meeting, I got the, the um, zoning, um, change of zoning, the blue paper um, on the Monday of spring break. And we're having the meeting. So in other words, we had that time over spring break to contact our neighbors, et cetera. So I happened to come to the mailbox today and met a neighbor who was just come, came home and just pulling theirs out of their mailbox after being away for two weeks. So people do go away. They go away to see their children. They go away to see their grandchildren. They go away for vacations. We all do that. The timing of this could have been a lot better for people in the community. So in conclusion, we do not support this development as it's being presented. The density is far too high for the proposed land use. Furthermore, there is a lack of adequate planning as to traffic, parking, lake access, sewage treatment, and access to household water needs. We are concerned regarding any change to the estuary ecosystem, ecosystem of Winders Creek, and thus will strongly oppose the development of this property as presented for the reasons we have presented and a contravention of the official uh, community plan. This proposed development could set a precedence uh, such that parcels of land, of which there are many, will be develop developed around the lake and the very nature and integrity of the lake will be changed forever. We as members of the community trust the regional district of Alberni Claypot will provide ongoing support for the already established OCP of Sprout Lake and will not allow these bylaw changes, which clearly contravene the official plan and the expressed views of the community property owners listed below. So these are the signatures of the people who are against this proposal. Start with the um, immediate neighbors, Jody Voss, who lives on Tilly Road, Bill and Claudia Sparling on Kimola Road, uh, Kim Smith on Lakeshire Road, Curtis Southern on Lakeshire Road, Barbara Mark on Clitza Drive, um, Who's that? <laughs> Is it you? <laughs> um, the sounds on Lakeshore Road. Um, uh, Chris Law on Tilly Road. Um, who's that? Oh, Stephen Mack on Lakeshore Road. Uh, myself, 10707 Lakeshore Road. Um, Rita Souden on Lakeshore Road. And Len Smith on Lakeshore Road. Um, Dickie Meath on Asher Road. Um, D. Meath on Asher Road, uh, Jim Millen on Asher Road, and John Spencer on Lakeshore Road. Ellen Fitzgibbon on Lakeshore Road, and Taylor on Lakeshore Road, and Dr. Arne Elias on Lakeshore Road. Magdalena Meath on Asher Road, uh, Eliza Earl on Flitz Drive, John Earl on Flitz Drive. Matt Short Reed on Lakeshore Road, Susan Helsepine on Lakeshore Road, Christopher Stoughton on Lakeshore Road, Doug Stevens on Lakeshore Road, James Chase on Faber Road, Andrea Wessler on Lakeshore Road, Michelle Wessler on Lakeshore Road, Jennifer Fly on South Drive, and Darren Lentz on South Drive. Zana Nesbitt, Bishop Drive, Bill Nesbitt, Bishop Drive, 
Valerie Menzies on Lakeshore Road, Cheryl and Dale Vanderhoek on Blower, Blower Road, Brad Zerbrig, Lakeshore Road, Wendy Zerbrig on Lakeshore Road, Jill Clow on Faber Road, Corbys, Lakeshore Road, and Carol Sharp, Lakeshore Road, Kathy Toms on Sterling Arm Drive, Pauline Cedric on Taylor Arm Drive, Patrick Norman, Tilly Road, Ron Peterson, Taylor Arm Drive, and Eleanor Peterson, Taylor Arm Drive. Yeah. Keith Peck, Bishop Drive, Liz Hansen, Faber Road. Heather Friesen on Bishop Drive, Carol, Karen Hoff on Bishop Drive, Michael Hoff on Bishop Drive, Mark Friesen, Bishop Drive, Cynthia Boneski on Bothwell Drive, Mark Bowen, Central Lake Road, Amy Littlewood, Central Lake Road, Phil Littlewood, Central Lake Road, Don Peck, Bishop Drive, Greg Vaughn, Lakeshore Road, Steve Vaughn, Lakeshore Road, Chris Nicholson, Taylor Arm Drive, Jane Davis on Lakeshore Road, Dwight Giesbrick on Lakeshore Road, Sandy Hales, Lakeshore Road. Keith Peck, Bishop Drive, Liz, did I say them already? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Julie Frank on Lakeshore Road, Robert Langeway, Lake Lakeshore Road, Tammy McDonald, Lower Road, uh, Georges uh, Monrufet on Sterling Arm Crescent, and Robin Monrufet, Sterling Arm Crescent. So there's a total 69 signatures here. There are people who are not in favor of this proposal whatsoever. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the staff want to get that sometime through the meeting. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll receive that petition okay. for the record. Thank you. At this time, is there, sorry? Can you turn off your microphone? Thank you. Okay, now we will hear from anyone else from the public that you will be recognized by myself. Uh, I actually do, I have seen Dale Nicodie's hand up on the screen. So I'll ask staff at this time to give me a speaking list in order so that we uh, are fair, so that I, I'm not trying to. So uh, we'll, Chair, um, not at this time. Uh, right now, I uh, would Chair recognizes Dale Mickey. Thank you, Penny. From the design that I'm seeing, I don't see how that's going to affect the nature of the area. It looks like it's been well thought out and we are trying to promote more industry, more tourism. They, I think they've done a wonderful job from what used to be the West Bay there, that what's there now in Sprout Lake Landing, it's a boon to the community. I believe that VHA, the Vancouver Island Health Authority, if somebody saw and has witnesses and pictures of sewage being pumped out, why isn't it being presented to VHA instead of talking about it amongst the neighbors? It, I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm not saying it did happen, but there's a way to process it. Vancouver Island Health Authority will also process and approve any septic systems. I believe that we are missing a great opportunity here in Port Alberni and Sprout Lake to develop this as a world-class resort and to please proceed ahead with this. This has my full support and whatever I can do to help it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any 
I'll, I'll refer to staff. The next is uh, Gary Rudder. And then, then we'll get someone from the audience here. So Gary Rudder, Chair recognizes you. Okay, thanks, Penny. Can you uh, hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so uh, I'd just like to uh, to speak in a little bit more detail on one of the uh, issues that was brought up earlier. I'm surprised that it's a major issue and um, I don't believe it was addressed at all by the original speaker for the, uh, the representative for the Sprout Lake, uh, uh, Sprout Lake Landing. I don't think it was even considered. And that's the, um, the access to the lake and their dock. Um, it's already, that dock's only in the summertime, there's only three to five feet of water there. And it's very turbid. Any boats coming in there stir up that water um, in a big way. Um, uh, let me ask this question. Why would people pay top dollar to rent these cottages? The answer to that is obviously for access to Sprout Lake. That's the draw is coming to Sprout Lake. And, you know, uh, I, I understand it's a, it's a good idea to in, in increase the, uh, the um, I mean, the usage of the lake, I, 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 I get that. But this is already a crowded area. And what they're doing is increasing the density here without providing additional access to the lake. That dock, um, if you put 15 units up, up above, chances are you're gonna have multiple families in those units for renting. I mean, there'll be high price units and that's what people are here for is a holiday. Where are they gonna go to access the lake? That dock, that doesn't work. That that dock, you can't. You you put kids out there and try and swim. Um, it's a hazard. It's it's a safety issue. You can't swim off of that dock. There's it's it's too shallow, um, and it's a major thoroughfare. There's there's boats coming in and out to the restaurant, to the store, um, constant traffic. Um, that's a serious hazard. And uh, Spro Lake uh, uh, Landing is saying that that is their access that they're gonna to provide to these additional 15 units. How are they uh, going to do that? It's, it's, it's just not feasible. And uh, trying to park boats there, uh, it's not designated as a marina. They'd have to have a marina designation. I mean, it, uh, the, the old uh, Lakeshore store, they tried to increase their um, moorage over there, and they were not allowed to do that. How would Sprout Lake Landing be allowed to park that many docks there? It's also in direct uh, 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 conflict with the new regulations that are planned for this area that are trying to limit the amount of the size and the amount of docks and the number of boats per dock. This would uh, fly in the face of that as well. Those are regulations that haven't been in, uh, uh, implemented yet, but uh, this is in definite opposition to that. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. You, you've got to, you're providing additional uh, accommodation, but, and their primary purpose for being there is for access to the lake, but you're not providing that. You're, you've got a huge bottleneck there. You're not solving the problem. That's one of the biggest problems here. And it's not even being considered from, from what I've heard. Um, another part of that problem is this turbidity and the, and the water quality. We're about seven docks away, seven uh, properties away from the West Bay. And in the summertime, when the traffic starts to pick up, we go from a nice clear water to we can't even see the bottom uh, at times uh, underneath our dock. And we're only eight feet deep. That's how turbid the water gets uh, when the traffic starts to increase. And that's current traffic. You start to pile all those people on. I can't, number one, I can't, I just can't see how you can do that. Those people are going to be disappointed and, or they're going to be looking for somewhere to go, uh, some way to get access to the lake. Uh, it, it just isn't feasible. Uh, and, and that water quality, we drink this water. I mean, it's a problem in, in the summertime, the, the, um, the effects, the impact of the water by the current number of people and the traffic let alone what it's going to be with this new uh, amount of people. It just, it, it just boggles the mind uh, as to, you know, they're not even thinking of this. How, how, I, 
I can't understand how they do it. They're going to have a bunch of uh, upset people, you know, trying to rent and not have access. I, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, let me just, I'm just reading my notes here. Uh, so th that's, that's the main thing is, is just the density, you know, I, yeah, they can provide the accommodation, but but they're not providing any additional access to the lake, and and they don't have access to the lake. So they say they're going to do it, but how are they going to do that? Uh, I had issues on the septic system as well, but I think that's more or less being addressed at this point in time. So uh, that's my input. Thanks, Benny. Hey, thank you, Gary. Uh, fellow in the back. Come to the mic, state your name, and uh, address the chair. Thank you. Got one here. Um, Sorry, just a little bit of technical difficulty here. I've stolen one from next Great. door. And my name is, oh, wait, wait a second. Thank you. Happy years, too. And my name is Hardy Fink. I live on Bothwell Road, right by the fish and duck, so we know something about unintended consequences. Um, you know, whenever we get a utopian proposal, it sounds really good until you it's faced with reality. And then we get the unintended consequences that are totally predictable in the future. So I, I kayak just about every morning all over the lake in different parts, especially over to, often over to West Bay. And when I see that development that's happened basically from the fish, from the uh, water bombers over to the West Bay and on the south side of West Bay, uh, it's amazing how much development has been there. Um, when Cynthia and I first moved to the lake, we almost bought not far from where where uh, this new development is going to be. We're so happy we're not living over along Lakeshore Road with all the traffic, all the boat activity that's there, and a number of multi uh, I don't know multi units that have been built up into the hills. It, it's just unbelievable. And now you want another set. So I think the unintended consequences have been mentioned. Uh, Mrs. Smith, a super presentation. Thank you for for uh, all that detail that I certainly didn't know. But parking, I'm not sure it's going to be a, um, a general parking area, but with 15 units, you have to expect space for 30 cars as a minimum, and probably one boat trailer as a minimum. Uh, each of those will take about 200 square feet. So now your 1,200 square feet becomes almost 2,000 just to accommodate the families that live there. The um, number of people per unit, four, five, six, during that time period, we're now talking about 100 extra people that will want access to the lake. Many of those people will have not only a motorboat, they'll have a sedu, they'll want canoes, um, paddle boards. What are they gonna do with all that stuff? Where is it gonna go? How can they launch it? If they want to use, as has been mentioned by the person on, on uh, the Zoom call, that they want to use that extended dock, it would have to be extended even more. It's, it's not safe. It's not deep enough uh, for swimming uh, for that number of boats. We used to go over there to, to have supper or to eat at the restaurant. And just to park our boat there was a big problem. It's just not deep enough for multiple more boats. and. Can they extend the dock out another 50 feet, another 100 feet for 15 more boats? Of course not. And then I wonder 
Um, I've kayaked around the estuary and past the Beaver Dam, the Beaver House, and underneath the culvert across to the other side of the highway. It's a fun thing to do when the water is just at the right level. But I wonder how the, the high and the low uh, lake levels are measured or determined. Because from the high that I've experienced, that was in 2016, to the low from last summer and the summer before was almost the same. It's 13 feet, almost exactly four meters difference between low and high. In the summer low, that dock is useless. And when it's high, I'm not sure how much, how close it'll get to the sewage system or whatever else you people are planning. Um, I won't talk about the septic system. I don't know enough about that, but you have to accommodate 100 people and maybe 120. I'm not sure that's possible in that little space. Um, I know that's just a rock pile. So I'm, I just don't know how the how the sewage system is going to work, how they can have to blast through all that rock to make that happen. Um, I think that's enough because everything else has been said by the two people. We are definitely opposed to this expansion of, of uh, usage of that lake in that part of the lake, especially. It's just, I, I would not want to live on Lakeshore Road and allow that to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to take one from the Zoom and then we'll come back to the room. And I see that we have Okay, my um, chair recognizes Mike Seymour. Thank you very much, Chair. My name is Mike Seymour. I'm with MSR Solutions. I put the uh, comments together in regards to the on-site sewage treatment and disposal system. I just want to uh, provide some comments to that, uh, that the system that will be designed is based on the sewage system regulation, the governing document, and the standard practice manual, which outlines general conditions uh, and standard practice for the system. Uh, with the works that were done by the previous consultant on, on it and the developed land consultant, he had identified that we could do this with lots of soil for dispersal. And I also provided an option that we could do this with a mechanical treatment uh, solution and reduced soil area. It really comes down to what is best manageable on the site. Our 35 years of experience with systems as specialists with on-site systems. We've done, designed them throughout BC within close proximity to drinking water wells, surface water supplies and other areas of risk and are fully comfortable we can provide a reliable and cost-effective solution which best fits the constraints of the site and the receiving environment. All the systems that we provide will provide vertical separation between the point of discharge and the impervious layer or water table as a further factor of safety. The treatment provided will deal with all bacteriological concerns and solids loading, and there will be mitigation of phosphorus and nitrogen, which are not considered by Island Health and the sewage system regulation and under the detailed design we will address all of those concerns. And just as an anecdotal, I'm working on a system serving 60 modular homes on Cowichan Lake. It's very close proximity to the lake. I'm uh, 30 meters away from the lake and we are addressing very similar types of concerns. So uh, I'm very confident uh, that anything that we design on this site will meet those concerns of the residents with regards to uh, a safe environment and human health and to address more concerns than what they've addressed with uh, in their concerns. So this will meet those requirements. And if there are any other questions on it, I can answer. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Chair recognizes Cynthia. My name is Cynthia Berneski. I live on Blackwell Road. I'm also opposed to this proposal. Um, one thing that nobody has mentioned also about the water around Spilt Lake Landing is that it is wall-to-wall -wall water loads. The whole end of the lake is full of water loads. There's no open water at all. So whether it's shallow or turbid or whatever, it's also not swimmable. So here I am having a holiday with my 
two-year-old and my six-year-old, and I want to go down to the lake and have a swim, are my kids going to jump off the end of the dock? You know, maybe they don't even swim. I am going to be looking for a shallow beach. I don't want to have to put my kids off the end of the dock. And there's nothing to prevent me, assuming I brought a boat along, to get in the boat and go anywhere else in the lake. So these people that are renting, as somebody has pointed out, they come there because it's Bro Lake and because they want access to the water and they want to have a holiday. And they can get in their boats and go anywhere. They don't have to stay at that dock. And they're not going to because, as everybody's pointed out, it's not swimmable there. So saying that you are going to provide vacation, tourist destination, world-class, whatever, whatever, and then the Sprout Lake landing dock is what you're providing, that is not world-class. It is not acceptable. The other point I'd like to make is, as my husband, whose name was not on the petition, by the way, it could be added, um, we live next to the fish and duck. And you talk about unintended consequences. Now, I have to give that man credit that he bought the house right next to us and the fish and duck property. So it's now one property and he manages, he tries really hard to be a very good manager. He tries to control the noise. He does all sorts of things, but he has also designated a pathway from up on the top of Bothell Road down to his property. And he's put lights all the way down and all the way around his property. And he leaves those lights on all the time. So where at night we used to have it fully dark, you go out and see the stars and so on. Now we have light pollution. That was not intended. And he's not trying to be awful, but it is a thing that happens. The last week I've been out working my garden and he is power washing his boats. He has 11, 12, whatever it is now, houseboats, 13, and they all have to be power washed. It takes a full day to power wash a boat. And I'm out in my garden working. And I am listening to that power washer go all day. It's it's a once a year thing, but it's exactly the time when I want to get out there in the spring and work in my garden. Another unintended consequence. He B and B's the house. So starting in June, even May, whatever, he starts renting it out. Most people come for a week. Again, as I say, he tries to manage very well. He gets families in. And yet. Our bedroom window, which we keep open because we have air conditioning, we want airflow, is right beside the front yard of the house next door where all the people congregate. And we have had people sitting out there. They're not noisy. They're not playing music and so on. They're just talking till three o'clock in the morning. And I mean, we don't sleep that well. And here they are out there talking, maybe laughing a little bit. As soon as somebody says something a little bit louder, laughing, you know, you wake up and think, oh my God, they're still out there unintended consequences. And you're going to have 15 of those right next door to all these people here. And you can have the best switch system in the world. You can have a parking place. You are not going to deal with all those kind of consequences that we are living with, living beside the fish and duck. And, and not to mention, we used to have a, a little forest up at the top of our road that shielded our house from the road. We couldn't see the road. The road nobody could see our house from the road. He cut down that whole entire forest in order to make a parking lot. It is the Joni Mitchell song come to life. You tear out the trees, you put in a parking lot. And all summer long, we have got cars parked there and they're coming in and out and they're noisy. And sometimes you've got people with big trucks or whatever. So we listen to the noise of those cars all summer long. They come in, they go out. So now you say, okay, well, we'll have a place for all these cars to park, but then all the neighbors are gonna be listening to those cars going in and out, doing whatever they're doing, loading boats and unloading boats and whatever another unintended consequence. So it's really not about the septic system. I still don't feature how that, I've, I've walked up there, I don't know how many zillion times, it's a big rock. Anyway, even if they can manage some kind of septic system, it does not solve all these other problems. The, the fact is, this is a proposal. They can talk about the tourist, you know, the development. What this is, is somebody's gonna make money. And for that person to make money, all the other neighbors are gonna suffer. And the lake is going to suffer and all the animals are going to suffer. Do we always have to say that it's okay to damage some area as long as somebody makes money? Maybe they provide a job. Oh, that's great. Let's do it then. I'm sick of that. We have done enough damage to this planet using that basis. We can overfish and we can clear cut and we can pour effluent into the waters. It's great as long as somebody's making money. We have allowed that and allowed it and allowed it. 
I do not buy the fact that this is a tourist destination. Somebody's making money off this. That's a good reason to proceed with this. Thank you. Uh, no clapping. Thank you. Um, at, so at this time, uh, another speaker will go back to the Zoom, and I re chair recognizes Chris Law. Yeah, Chris Law, 10693 Tilly Road, Port Alberni. Um, I'd like to thank the ACR desk staff for giving us the opportunity to uh, participate in this democratic process. I'd like to thank the directors who are watching this now live, and I'd also like to thank the directors who watch this later in the video form to be fully informed on the issues. Um, Sprout Lake underwent an official community plan, um, which went through significant public input. Um, this zoning change conflicts the official community plan. I attended memory, numerous meetings for the official community plan, and I was very cognizant of what was happening on this property. I asked the pertinent questions at the time. Um, the property was zoned residential, was indicated as residential on the official community plan. And I wanted to make sure that stood. Uh, the, there are sections of the Sprout Lake Landing property that was designated commercial, and, and it always has been. It's historically designated commercial, and that's fine. Um, but I did my due diligence at that time, and I wanted to make sure that the official community plan didn't pro provide a loophole for this property to be changed to commercial. Uh, 10.2 residential policies. It is the regional district's policy to ensure that principal use in the all areas designated as residential must be residential as specified by the zoning bylaw. So, you know, all the people that participated in the official community plan, that's what they sort of saw. And people who purchased their properties, purchased their properties with that property being zoned residential. Uh, things do change over time, but I think it's very important to take the community and the neighbors into consideration when those changes are made. Um, one of the issues about putting 15 houses on that piece of property, it's going to put excessive pressure on the public accesses. People have talked about the unswimmability of that estuary spot. Uh, people get the itch there if they go in the water with all the, it's great for birds and migratory fowl, but they are what cause the itch to come into the water. So people won't want to be swimming there. They'll be putting pressure on the public accesses. We manage the public accesses because they can quickly become a party spot and uh, um, there's fairly relaxed rules provincially on people having campfires. It's crown property, people can have a fire there if they so choose and the only thing that limits fires in the summertime is the forest service putting on the fire ban which always happens way too late in this area so it increases the potential for fires. Um, there's going to be an increased traffic into Weiner Bay. Um, Weiner Creek Estuary is, uh, is a very important coho spawning creek. The coho are struggling in there from impacts of other things in the past and boat use and overfishing. Um, extra turbidity in the creek and extra uh, any effluent runoff into the creek from this development will actually be poses another one more hazard towards the survivability of that coho. And, species in that creek. Um, there's issues with the zoning, like the current zoning in that property restricts it to a five acre minimum. That piece of property is below the minimum, so it can't be subdivided off the main property right now. As soon as, if this zoning bylaw goes through, the zoning facilitates the ability of that property to be, to be subdivided off, to, off of the main property. In the future, um, these the proponents of this application may not be thinking about that, but plans change, people get tired of businesses, they sell it, and the new people that purchase that property may choose to do that. And then, you know, when somebody else comes in, even though it's restricted to 15 houses up there, with the, if the new zoning goes through, there's a whole bunch of other uses that can happen on that property under the current zoning. Um, the C6 will turn into the C2 if the draft bylaws go through and there's all sorts of things that can go into um, the C2. And it's like restaurants, bistros, gift stores, mini golf, um, health and welfare and medical services, fitness spas, liquor stores, cannabis retail stores. So if this zoning goes through, it opens that up to a whole plethora of different uses um, in the future if the, if the current owners or future owners want to do. Um, I'll just, the septic system has been touched off, but there's been a few questions asked on it. So I've lived in the area for 23 years. The septic system, there has been a problem for the 23 years I've lived here. I have attempted to get 
this addressed for 23 years. I've talked to the regional district and I've been told that it's a spring that is flowing from that hillside into the fish creek. Um, I kept telling people, uh, springs don't just flow July, August. Uh, they, they flow in the wintertime, but July and August, every, every summer when the hotel gets busy, it flows in. Um, this summer, I finally decided I was gonna contact Island Health. Somebody finally gave me the right person to contact. I contacted Island Health. They told, also told me it was a spring. So I took videos which correlated the flow to how busy the hotel was. And then Island Health got interested, decided to do an inspection, but they have to notify the owner before the inspection happens. Uh, they notified Sproke Lake Landing, but then Sproke Lake Landing pumped out the system and to uh, fix what they, what they determined were some issues. The problem is, is there was two septic systems. The original West Bay had a septic system, which did the same thing. The previous owner, Ross, put a, a new state-of-the-art approved by Island Health septic system would actually function the same way. Um, I, I'm not an expert on septic systems, but there's a, the, the property is a big dome rock, which slopes downhill towards Lakeshore Road, and it goes into a ditch. So the, the, the the effluent has a tendency of perking down, hitting the bad rock, flowing out onto the ditch and then into the fish creek. So I am not sure if the system can be designed to do that. I'm not an expert on that, but I just know two systems up there haven't worked properly over the 23 years that I've lived. Um, there has been no public plan made for how they're gonna get their water. Currently, I know the Sproat Lake Landing has issues pumping out of the lake because their systems always constantly plug up and I think they have to clean them two or three times a day. Increased boat traffic will increase that problem and keep clogging up theirs, plus all the neighbors' intakes for their water. Um, the, the other thing, the other options to drill a well, we know with our well that our water starts tasting a little sulfury in the summer when we have a little bit more usage on it. I'm just a little concerned if the Sproat Lake Landing drills a well, that might tap into the aquifer and cause a little bit of depletion of other people's waters. But like I said, there's no plan, so I'm not sure what they're gonna do there, but that's a concern. Um, the other problem is outside of the sewage, with you have uh, 20 or 15 houses up there, um, there's just, with people use and gardening and everything else and the rain flow we have here, there's going to be a runoff. And the runoff from that property, it's solid, it's just bad rock, very little soils, is all going to go into either Weiner Creek or the other creek on the other side. So it's just the density of that much people on a shallow soil dome rock. It's not even crush rock, it's just a big solid bad rock right there. It creates a problem for runoff. Um, the other, oh yeah, so the Sproat Lake Landing, they, you know, they have a dock that they're talking about uh, providing eight additional slips, eight, eight slips to the users of this cabin. Um, I took a look on the provincial government regulations to, to determine what is a commercial marina and Type A commercial uses, um, it sort of gives you a definition of what is a commercial, commercial marina and anything that services a motel or a hotel or a restaurant or pubs, which this dock does, is deemed a commercial marina. Right now, that dock has no classification, anything. It just goes out into the lake. People are using it. It gets expanded. Uh, another person spoke on how the Lakeshore store tried to do an official proper expansion of their commercial marina and it was rejected by the public. So I'm just kind of wondering how this dock just keeps functioning as a commercial marina without any regulations. It keeps getting expanded without any proper approvals. And they're, they're using, you know, they're going to be trying to provide that dock for more commercial purposes for another 10 people. And then um, one last point. Sprout Lake Landing already has a sizable piece of property that's owned commercial. When the hotel burnt down, there was a clean slate and they chose to put nine bedrooms on their commercial property. What they want to do now is they want to put 37.5 bedrooms, that's an average of two to three bedrooms per house, on the residential property. So, you know, what I'm, you know, when I look at something, why would you put a limited nine on your commercial property when that's where you're bedroom should go. They shouldn't be put onto the residential portion of your property. You shouldn't have four times as many bedrooms on your residential property as on your existing commercial. There's room on the commercial property for a proper development. And, uh, 
and you know, I was a main supporter of Sprout Lake Landing, and I, I would like to be again, but I'd like to support a business that is economically sustainable, environmentally sustainable, and neighborhood sustainable. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'll ask Alex Dyer to read out the chat. Thank you. We have a number of comments in the chat from Stacy Gaga, who provides her address as 10054 Sterling Our Present, and uh, extends her apology. She, she did not have a microphone, so uh, I offered to read out the comments uh, that she's been making throughout the presentation. Uh, so this from from Stacy, it's taking so long to get to this point of supporting alternative industries other than just forestry while sustaining the rural living lifestyle and, and keeping local biodiversity intact for sure. Uh, the ACRD should work with Mosaic to have all lake trails deferred from logging plans. Boats with toilets on board are a huge concern for us. How do we know waste isn't being dumped in our drinking water? Mosaic forestry is destroying via clear cutting everything Barb just mentioned for the surrounding wildlife habitat. Uh, then she made a comment. Thanks, Penny. I'll stay on topic. And then continues. Interestingly, I think most of Barb's concerns are also addressed in my letter based on my meeting with the owner with most objections being overcome with SLL, Spur Lake Landing, operating policies for guests uh, regarding vehicle numbers, restrictions, respecting private property, quiet hours, ecotourism, light waterfront or light watercraft activities. MSR engineering, sewage recommendations for increased guest capacity, biodiversity protection, guest demographics, et cetera. Uh, Ian addressed the lake access during our meeting. He mentioned directing them to Spirit Lake Park, hiking, biking, et cetera. And goes on to say, based on what I've learned from Ian Sperling, the owner, they plan to market and attract the same demographics that are going to the west coast of the island who would be interested in kayaking, paddleboarding, hiking, biking, etc. No one wants to walk in the muck in the shallow waters. The upgrade to a new septic system will probably be uh, appreciative based on Chris's testimony of past issues. A new one would work more efficiently, I imagine. And then ask the question, can they build on that property beside the current structures? That's it in the chat. Thank you. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak? Chair recognizes a fellow here at the end. Thank you. Name and address and thank you. My name is Brian Soden. My address is 10745 Lakeshore Road. So this application states that uh, many of our neighbors have purchased properties or home, homes knowing that the hotel has a long history in the community. The West Bay Hotel was initially established on Lot A roughly 50 years ago to provide accommodation and tourist services to the traveling public. But the opposite is true. The residential neighborhood was established long before the West Bay Hotel was developed. Many of the original families still reside here and are now in their fourth and fifth generations. It is the Sprout Lake Landing that changed the design, buildings, and business plan and no longer fit into the neighborhood. It didn't seem to have any respect for the neighborhood or Sprout Lake community unless it was for profit. The West Bay Hotel coexisted in the neighborhood and was part of the quiet rural community. They did not try to place 15 or more dwellings in a residential area where their septic system was located or disrupt the privacy and density of the neighborhood. As far as density, there's very little mention in the reports regarding the density or its effects on the population, either the current or future population. According to our estimates, estimates on the population, there's 0.85 persons to one acre living in the current neighborhood. If the proposed development goes ahead, there will be a range of 22.5 to 30 persons per acre on the proposed site. So the density increased drastically. The estimate is an increase of 2,647% on the conservative stand, not accepted. As far as the sewage, the J.E. Anderson report was done by Phil Bucken, one of the owners of Sprout Lake Landing. 
done in February of 2022. I think it might have a bias. MSR Innovative Engineering Solutions, report of November 2022, retained only were retained only to review the report done by J.E. Anderson's associates for the design of an on-site sewage system. They did not do an on-site visit. They based the report solely on the JEA report and other sources, such as Google satellite photos, BC soils map, and I'm not sure if any other items were referred to in the report. So any report of this nature should be done by a third party with no involvement with the applicants. As this property is mostly exposed bedrock outcrop with no or little soil on top for drainage, it becomes a serious problem. The runoff goes directly into Wina Creek or the pond and fish bearing stream on the south side. On the MSR report on November 7, 2022, they estimated four people per dwelling using a total of 20 dwellings with two bedrooms. Now it's being changed to two or three bedroom units and up to 15. But knowing that the number instead of the original four people per unit could be six to eight people in 15 dwellings, you know, two to three bedroom units, which would be 90 to 120 people up to it. In the report, they refer to their calculations as conservative, as they estimate that one person, it appears that each person could generate up to approximately 225 liters of sewage per day. So in this small area, what uh, it could be up to 20,000 to 27,000 liters of sewage be created which is as much water as the water bomber drops in one drop. Now think, day in and day out on this site, I don't think that much sewage could be easily disposed of safer. Now add the hotel, the store, sewage as well, as special events where you have another 50 to 100 people, say a wedding, fully booked hotel rooms, the restaurant, seating is filled to capacity, store customers and staff. What will we have then? We have noticed that the existing sewage system fills up and leaks out of the hillside into the ditch and into Weiner Creek and the fish spawning creek. And the smell of sewage is very evident in the summer. We are closest to the fish spawning creek as it runs beside our home and into the bay where we access our household and drinking water and participate in a variety of recreation activities in water, swimming, boating. So increase the density and then increase the sewage issue, which affects the water quality. We noticed that no one has reported on the water quality in any of the accumulated reports. How does density affect the physical and mental well-being of the community? None of us chose to live in the city. We want to continue to live in a rural lifestyle. It is only the new owners of Sprout Lake Landing that want to change the density, density, as their business plans were not designed to coexist with the neighborhood. Uh, we met with the owners here a few weeks ago, and Phil Buchan, stated he was an engineer with 30 years of experience in waste management and the creator of the sewage report, JEA. And uh, he had mentioned or said to us that he had disposed of the sewage into the bushes as a prudent way to deal with the septic problem they were having. He also stated that he told Lenny Rose from Island Health about this and that she was okay with him doing this. So the next day I called Lenny Rose of Violent Health and asked her if he had done so. And she claimed that he had not done that and she would not give permission to have the sewage pumped into the bushes on the surface of the ground. He also said that he had done this because it was a Sunday and he could not 
but none of the businesses are open to deal with the septic problem. I found that this was untrue as I called Alberni Septic Tank Service and they said they're open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And he said, Sprout Lake Landing, he would have been there within about an hour and disposed of the sewage properly. And there is a report that refers to the cottages as seasonal. Does this mean that just the summer three months? No mention of a covenant to make sure that they will remain just seasonal. It is difficult to trust the Sprout Lake Landing owners and management regarding their sewage system and assurances that it's adequate. When many of us neighbors have physically seen the sewage seepage, smell the odor, we have documented video and photo evidence contradicting their statements. We depend on the lake for our household water and it needs to be potable and safe for our usage. It's also difficult to trust the owners and management as there are conflicting reports regarding the purpose of these dwellings, as there are no covenants preventing stratification for full-time use and rentals, rather than just seasonal, assuming one season, and connected only to Sprout Lake Landing. The MSR Solutions Inc. report dated November 7, 2022, noted that the capacity site at 22,000 litres a day, but it's based on JEA's report of four-person occupancy of 20 units. 80 people, but the occupancy rate now calculated as 68 persons in 15 dwellings would be anywhere from say 90 to 120, which would raise the capacity of the site between 20,000 and 27,000, which exceeds JEA's report stating the site had a capacity of 22,000 meters per day. According to Lenny Rose's report dated November 12, 2021, proposed sewage systems with domestic sewage flows of 22,700 liters per day or more will be referred to the Ministry of Environment. Looking at the capacity estimates, where is the Ministry of Environment's report? Congestion, traffic, parking, safety. As a retired RCMP member, disabled due to a traffic accident, I'm very concerned about the congestion, traffic, parking, and safety in this area. The traffic on Lakeshore Road has con increased considerably over the last few years. There are many pedestrians, many walking with their dogs, people biking, families with children, accessing the roads or where possible using the pathway in the summer. The traffic in the summer, the traffic is even greater. The Watt Consulting Group, May 17, 2022, estimated that 100 vehicles in an hour or 1.7 vehicles per minute. While traveling on Lakeshore Road, we will be traveling on Lakeshore Road. Now that was based on two bedroom units and 20 houses. Now we've upped the bedrooms two to three and 15 units. So it would be almost double the amount of traffic according to their report. So that would increase the traffic in and out of the development for six to 12 vehicles per hour uh, accessing Lakeshore Road, increasing the potential risk for accidents. Vehicles going south on Lakeshore Road have limited visibility as they crest the hill and will not be able to see the vehicles coming down the hill from the development until they get to the edge of the road. This is a partial blind intersection because the hillside that is part of the development blocked the view of southbound vehicles on Lakeshore Road to see the vehicles coming out of the development. Many vehicles below the stop site and have a greater speed increasing the risk of not being able to stop if the vehicle enters the road from the development as it is a partial blind driveway. Most likely the vehicle coming down the from the development will be crossing Lakeshore Road, slow to turn or hauling a trailer that will cause their turn to be even slower, increasing the risk of potential accidents. Pedestrians from the development, according to the owners, are to use the north exit walk exit that will be walking down a steep hill that leads to the west side of the bridge over Winder Creek and then cross over onto the trail to their dock. There is no crosswalk here so the pedestrians will be jaywalking unless they proceed to the corner where the crosswalk is at the intersection and walk back to the trail which is not likely. People tend to take the shortest way possible. It is common with practice for the Sprout Lake Landing staff to be crossing from the hotel to the store or vice versa, jaywalking, and do not cross at the marked crosswalk either. 
as it is a shorter and faster route. Several years ago, the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure installed stop signs in the crosswalk at the main intersection from Lakeshore Road to Highway 4 to increase the safety for pedestrians and vehicles. But this crosswalk is rarely used and there are vehicles who do not heed the stop sign. So in rainy conditions and particularly at night, people are hard to see. So vehicles turning onto Lakeshore Road to go south on high, onto Lakeshore Road will not be able to pick up the pedestrians in their lights until they have completed their turn and then suddenly need to stop abruptly. Again, another possible risk for accidents and why it is important to reduce or maintain the density in this area, not increase it. Children on bicycles using this trail may lose control and ride out onto the oncoming tra traffic, a very dangerous spot for a pathway. But there's no alternative. Another potential risk for accidents to happen and another reason to vote no on this proposed development. Parking. Lakeshore Road is a narrow road, so when drivers park their vehicles on the shoulder that are not wide enough to accommodate the vehicle, the road becomes even more narrower, making it more difficult for emergency vehicles and vehicles to pass. Unfortunately, the parking at the hotel is very limited or as their designated parking lot is small, so most vehicles park along Lakeshore in both directions. Drivers have parked resident driveways or tried to park on their private properties to get as close to the hotel as possible. In some cases, becoming hostile with asked to move their vehicle. This issue is an accident risk, but also a safety concern, as the situations like this can escalate, especially if substances have been consumed. Adding more density will only compound the problem. Thus far, when Sprope Lake Landing is busy, running at peak times, the parking does overflow into onto Lakeshore Road, creating a hazard. There have been vehicles slide swipe and forced off the road in our area. <clears throat> Regarding the proposed development parking, the latest map titled SLL Cottage Concept shows dwellings that have individual driveways that was on the board here a while ago that appear narrow and difficult to navigate especially if the vehicle is a truck and trailer run. More likely, these guests or owners will be parking along the road, causing more congestion and traffic problems. Not okay in our neighborhood. We live here to get away from traffic and congestion. This does not improve our lifestyle, only the opposite. Strata development. According to Ross Mitchell's report, March 1st, 2021, he states the proposed property area would be stratified with each cottage for sale to prospective owners looking for permanent or seasonal residents. Under the terms of the strata agreement, those properties could, at the owner's option, made available for short-term rentals through Sprout Lake Landing Rental Management. When the new owners, when we met with the new owners, we asked what their intentions were and, to, and if they would agree to put covenants to restrict these dwellings to not be stratified, they refused, leading us to believe that this original business plan is still in effect. If these bylaws get passed without any covenant to protect the neighbors from a housing development that is not in control of the Sprout Lake Landing, then our neighborhood will be changed forever and our privacy and lifestyle will never be the same. There are enough examples along Lakeshore Road already to see how congested the area is and yet no one seemed to care about the true effects of uh, effects on the fragility of the bay, ecosystems, water quality, and on the residents, as money seems to be the number one object, but only a few gain and the rest of us lose. If you refer to Lenny Rose's report dated November 1st, 2021, she makes reference that there is some indication that the rezoning is being sought to allow for the future potential to subdivide this parcel. She also re recommends that the site be assessed under Island Health Subdivision Standards to determine if the site meets the minimum standard for lot size and soil depth as established in that standard. If the parcel does not meet the minimum requirements, would not be in a position to support the application due to the potential negative impacts on the development. While the neighborhood and other community residents have already provided a list of negative impacts in, of the development,
status. Keep the zoning as indicated on the Sprout Lake official community plan. Vote against these bylaws, the concerns listed in the petition, the letters and discussions on social media and meetings need to be taken seriously. Do not forget, we live in the most fragile bay on the lake and it includes the surrounding area of Sprout Lake Landing, whether it is offshore or inland. We all have a, to be good stewards of the lake and its surrounding area. And whether it is on the lakeshore or inland, each area is vulnerable. We coexisted with the West Bay Hotel as they kept their business on one site where the Sprout Lake Landing is currently and did not intrude into the neighborhood. So do not penalize or make the neighborhood responsible for their business plan practices or profitability. We want to keep the status quo. In this Sprout Lake Landing application, it stated that it will not compromise the site or Weiner Creek's ecological integrity and rural character. Allowing these bylaws to pass, the proposed development is definitely going to change the rural character, absolutely affect the ecological integrity of the site, pond, fish spawning creek, and Weiner Creek, as well as the wildlife estu estuary and water quality. We are tired of reporting sewage problems and putting up with the odor. With high density, change will happen. In a report dated May 17, 2022 from Julie Budgen, she notes that the removal for the removal of Scotch broom, Japanese knotweed on this proposed development site and recommends the removal to prevent the spread and establishment within adjacent natural areas. This has not been done yet. We, the neighbors, have worked for 20 or more years to eradicate Scotch broom and Japanese knotweed, knotweed from the lake front properties and road. For many, many years, we've been picking up garbage along the roadway and also clearing the bottoms of Weiner Bay and the creeks of garbage, usually collecting, usually collecting truckloads during late spring and early summer and fall. Working together, making our community a better place, lending support or aid when the neighbors need help. That is what our rural neighborhood is about. We respect each other's privacy and domains. The increase in density at such a high rate will affect all of us. It is imperative that these bylaws get defeated. <clears throat> As indicated on the land use designation of Sprout Lake Official Community Plan, plan Bylaw 1310, the current residential designation conforms to the res of the residential neighborhood. It needs to remain. If this changes to commercial and this proposed development goes through, our properties will depreciate in value. When you own a home in, home in the neighborhood, your property is part of a greater whole that affects your property's value. In multiple ways, while messy neighbors can cause problems, so can changes that are uncharacteristic of your neighborhood. Remax 2023, Bill Gassett. What makes property value decrease? Bill Gassett, a nationally recognized real estate leader, one of the top REMAX realtors points out that having noisy neighbors can drive down the value of your home. And the tighter the quarters, the worse it gets. Yung Ping Pan, a Stanford graduate, cites that high concentration around renters can drag the property values down by 13.8% March 28, 2016. So consider the increase in traffic, noise from the dock, all the extra boats, jet skis, the people partying on the dock, constant traffic, extra pollution, turbidity of the lake, it's going to drop the value of our properties. So consider uh, the extra boat trailers, personal watercraft, recreational ve vehicles, bikes, trucks, and cars in these confined areas. There will be more noise, greater pollution, lost privacy, greater, greater numbers of density of people everywhere in the bay, on the dock, along trails, dwellings, roadways, etc. We already deal with sewage system failures and odors, water quality changes, and ecosystems that are at greater risk. Now the changes are un that are uncharacteristic of our neighborhood will re result in depreciation in our house and land values, as well as all the neighbors. So how can this be fair? So how many Neighbors, does this affect and why put tourists first and Sprout Lake Landing's profit before our own? If this goes ahead, how will we be compensated for this loss and change? 
It's only the profit margin of Sprout Lake Landing that is driving the change. And perhaps how ACRD is interested in promoting tourism, but no one seems concerned about the residents who will be negatively affected. The only ones who will benefit from this are Sprout Lake Landing owners, contractors who will do the construction, realtors who will, be, will sell the two to three bedroom units, and the ones that will lose are the residents who live in the neighborhood with a de decrease in neighborhood uh, property value and high density of number of people, increased traffic, boat congestion, noise, pollution, estuary damage. And I have a couple extra here. So I wanted to know how these units will be prevented from being sold or stratified. They mentioned they were just going to be part of the rental unit for the hotel. What guarantee or how can we put something in that will never allow it to be changed? The watch report, as I mentioned, was based on two bedroom units. You now have 15 two or three bedroom units. From what I've seen, the outrigger canoes use Lakeshore Dock now, not Sprout Lake Landing. Uh, Sprout Lake Landing people. I, last year, we're using our dock and wouldn't leave without saying it was on as it was on the water. Anyone can use it. So that goes to the fact that they won't be using the Sprout Lake Landing's dock. They'll be using other people's dock where they were using ours. And they were very abusive and we couldn't get them off. So in, during the winter, the existing Sprout Lake Landing dock is not accessible due to high water. It's underwater and you can't get to it unless you swim. Finally, I, I identify as Aboriginal and as more and more information is surfacing of the horrendous losses that the Aboriginal communities have had to bear, being considered not worthy, not recognized, and with continued colonial practices and white settler mentality, we understand how our elders must have felt. Is this another change that we are supposed to just accept? For someone who has newly arrived in our neighborhood, wanting to change our lifestyle and neighborhood for their gain, supported by governing body that is more interested in doing what is wanted by a business for profit, and tourists are more valued than the residents in the area, we have never felt so devalued, disrespected, and considered not worthy. Just like our ancestors, yet this is 2023. Thank you. Thank you for that. No count clapping, please. Um, I I saw two hands, so I saw Mike and I saw you. Um, we'll go to you first, sure. And then Mike Rattan. Okay, my name is Kimberly Smith. I live at 10750 Lakeshore Road. I have the largest type of leaf fence line uh, joining this project. and. Uh, over the years, I've lived there for 23 years. Um, some of my concerns are from past uh, development that has been tried up there. I endured a summer or maybe even two summers of blasting because they were going to put cabins up there before and they were trying to get a perk for a septic and they never made that. Um, when they blasted up there, I endured small cracks in my house in the plaster and I'm concerned about any blasting because I don't know how they're going to do this, these cabins or the septic without blasting. Um, maybe they're not, but I live on the same rock as that rock. So my whole house is on a rock and it's the same rock that's up there. So whatever happens there happens to my house too. So I'm a little, I'm very concerned about that. Um, we're on the same fence line. My husband is is First Nations also, and we have a sweat lodge in our backyard, and we pray. And it's just downhill from their their uh, their fence line. So I I'm I have been concerned and about what kind of fence, how the fencing goes in. I don't really want a bunch of people crawling over the fence to see what we're doing. And we do sing and drum and. We make a little bit of noise, but in general, um, 
our place is quiet and dark and at night, and there's not a lot of noise except for, for a little bit of singing. In the, that's why we bought that place. When we bought that place, I have it in my letter. Uh, the site um, was listed as rural and a private setting and quiet. And that's exactly why I bought that. Place. I bought it because there was water on both sides, three sides actually. You know, so I, I was concerned about fire for myself, but for them up there, if they're having fires um, in the summertime to roast marshmallows or whatever they're doing up there, I'm concerned about that. That's a, that's not like that's a rock. It's not like having it where there's water and wet brown. That's just a rock. I. Uh, I'm learning that there's going to be a path in front of their place that stops at my property line. So when people walk along that path from down Lakeshore and then it suddenly comes to the stop, then what? Where do they go? Do they go out on the street? Are they walking, are they walking along my fence line? Um, there's a ditch there, but then there's not a whole lot of traffic really to get and place to get off the road. The other thing is, is that as it stands now, um, people come down Lakeshore Road from the um, from the landing, and they realize that they've gone the wrong way, or they need to call somebody or whatever. They pull in my driveway. They pull in my driveway to turn around. So I want to know how many people that missed that turn off to go up to the because it's not it's it's very short. Um, you know, it's, it's very short where they have to turn in and go up there. And if there's a lot of traffic or somebody's right on their right on their tail, they might not be able to go up there. And then are they going to come to my place and then turn around in my drive? Because it's not just the road, it's my driveway. So I've already had problems coming out of my driveway. I found people parked on the side of the road outside of my driveway, um, which causes me problems trying to get into my driveway or get out of my driveway. So that's just how it is now, especially in the summer when there's so many visitors. A lot of people on Lakeshore have visitors from Alberta and all kinds of other places. And then they rent places like Airbnb. So there's a lot of traffic in the summer. And I, I'm already terrified sometimes about how that looks and then just the traffic in my own driveway. I, I, um, I, I, I've been kind of like, Digesting all this stuff and and uh, it, it's kind of um, interesting um, trying to. I, I think that people can build anywhere, and I think people can actually say anything to get their way, but do, but then putting it into doing, like saying and doing, is two different things. I also have a concern about. You know, they say, oh, we're not going to let people go into the reptilian area or we're not going to let people go to the dock or whatever. But that's what they're saying. But the people that are staying there, they may do a completely different thing. It's my experience. You cannot control people. You can say you're going to, you can try, but people will do what people will do. And that's, and so I'm not, I'm not assured. I don't feel assured or, or okay with um, saying you're going to control how much noise people make, how much light they shine on things with cars and whatever, whatever kind of lights they have up there, the noise that you can't, you can't control all that. You just can't. People are on vacation. They're going to have fun. And I, I'm all for it, but not, not next door. <laughs> Thank you for letting me talk. Thank you. Next on my list, I had Mike Bertan. Thanks, Penny. Uh, Mike Bertan, 4488 Southgate Road. Thinking about what people's concerns are here, and they're legitimate concerns, but I also think you've had an opportunity to share those concerns with the new owners of Sprout Lake Landing. And they've done a really good job of listening to those concerns and adjusting their plans in order to accommodate those concerns. You know, my family first was associated with Sprout Lake in 1947. And my grandmother bought 
two and a half acres on what was then called Mill Arm for $700. There was no road. If you wanted to get there, you had to get in a boat and get to your property and build a cabin. And of course, my grandfather wanted to build a cabin as close to the lake as he could get. And my grandmother said, Ollie, you can't build there. The lake will rise. Gladdy, you don't know what you're talking about. Let me build my cabin. So he built his cabin right where he wanted to. And guess what happened? That lake rose. Guess what happened to the outhouse? It floated away. So then they built their house much further up the hill, but there was still no road. They had to build a log cabin, a three bedroom log cabin, and it's still there today. So the point of that is in all of that time, there has been tremendous change around that log cabin on what's now Cuyuna Road. Huge houses, many houses, many concerns, all sorts of issues that people have had to face and they've faced successfully and they've faced for the most part as neighborhoods. They've accommodated one another, they've supported one another, they've been there to help one another when it's needed. And whether someone's fallen out of a tree or gone over a bank or hurt themselves falling off the float house or the float. People work together. This is another example of how we can have the opportunity to work together. As a region, we want to strengthen our future. We want to strengthen the opportunities for people who live here, who work here, who come and visit here, who come and spend their money here. We have our port, we have our forest industry, we have aerospace industry. Yes, the world's largest private wild firefighting company is based here in Port Alberni. And we have tourism. In addition to the other parts of our economy that we need to strengthen. So this tourism proposal, what's it going to be? Who's going to come? Who are the people who are being targeted to come to this? They're not people with boats. They're not people with sedus. They're not people who are going to make a big permanent presence in these cabins. There are people who are coming to explore this region. Get a ride on the Lady Rose. Do you know that, sorry, Francis Barkley. Do you know that the Francis Barkley brings 12 to 14,000 people a year into the Alberni Valley? And each one of them sp spends an average of $300 a day for three days. So that's about $1,000 each. Just from the Francis Barkley. That's a huge impact. But we don't, hear, we don't hear much about it. We don't see much about it. But it has a huge impact. The people who will be attracted are coming to Port Alberni as a regional destination. They'll come here, they'll choose to go to Banfield, they'll choose to go to the West Coast, they'll choose to go to an Alpine environment, they'll choose to take the Francis Barkley, they'll choose to go on to some of our trails. They may choose as well to go and spend some time on Sprout Lake. But that's what attracts all of us in the summertime and has for generations. So we think about it and we think, is this something that's possible for us to accommodate? Is it possible to plan for this? So our directors who get to vote on this proposal have a huge responsibility. They also have a huge opportunity. And I hope they choose wisely. I hope they choose to strengthen our economy. I hope they choose to set up conditions so that 
The concerns that have been mentioned this evening by the neighbors will have the opportunity to be acted on and we have the opportunity to be incorporated into the overall design, but it won't be done in such a way that shuts down this opportunity for this area. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Is there anybody else that would like to speak for the first time? Yes. Chair recognizes you. Good evening. My name is Rita Sogan, and I live at 10745 Lakeshore Road. I've lived there at that residence for 36 years, and I think I have a pretty good idea about what Sprout Lake is all about, what Port Alberni is about, what the whole region is about. I also know what it's like to live in these tourist towns. I also know what it's like, what Whistler is all about, what Tofino is all about. We had lots of areas. I've lived in this province about seven different locations. And the smaller areas try to encourage people to come, as Mike was saying. Let's try to get people in here so that we can spend our money and access our places and stuff like that. But when you've got a situation like that where you're trying to encourage someone, there's always a win and a lose. And in this case, you're losing. The losers are the residents who have told you in these petitions, why? Let their voices be heard. Why do we have to make room and continually make room for everybody else to come into our neighborhood? Unfortunately, this neighborhood has been like this for as long as I've known it. When you're talking about generations with your grandmother and your grandpa, your grandfather, like living at, at, in the cabin and stuff like that, in the changes that have happened, you're right. But most of the changes have happened for residential reasons. Is, please direct your comments to the chair. So the, the, the changes have been for residential reasons. Now you've heard about the changes that have happened at the lake. Absolutely. What have I noticed? The, the frogs aren't croaking anymore, the little ones. We have the base of the bullfrogs now. They're huge. In the summertime, when you hear them, they're huge. They wake you up at night because they're when they start croaking. There are definitely more people on the lake than they've ever been before. In our area, our little paths are no longer the same lily paths that were there when we first got there. We had beautiful flowers with our lily paths. Now they're very, they're very intrusive in our bay. We have people who say, why don't they get rid of those? I don't even want to swim towards the Sprout Lake because I swim every day. I swim for about two hours a day. When I swim, I have to be really careful of the boats. I have neighbors who've had to hop into their boats to go chase some of the boats and say, hey, watch where you're going. That water skier almost hit our swimmer. I am right beside the dock swimming, not out this way, I'm out this way. As you increase uh, your density, you're gonna increase these people. Are they not gonna access the lake? Are they gonna go over? <laughs> where? They're gonna go in, on the Lady Rose. I sure, I sure hope so, in the Francis Barclay. I hope that they go there. I hope that they access some of the region's things and whatever else. But really, they're going to be on Sprout Lake. But what we see all the time, my husband told you about people sit, sitting on our dock, refusing to leave. Even though we told them we pay taxes for that dock, that is our dock. They had all sorts of reasons why. They actually went then and anchored their boat that evening right in front of our dock and partied and peed uh, right into the lake and stuff like that. Unfortunately, when you're here for a holiday, you don't quite have the behaviors that might, you might have at home. And we, as neighbors, have put up with that, as have many people who live at Sprout Lake. We all know that. Go to Whistler, see the same thing. Go to Tofino. Look what they're trying to do. They're trying to prevent people from coming there. You have First Nations people having, in the, during the, the pandemic, having to stop people from going there to protect their reserves, their people from COVID, so that they would not have the tourists come and stuff because it brings all sorts of challenges with it. Now we are a neighborhood that's been there together. We, we have for years had to work on ourselves, just getting rid of the crew and getting rid of the not. No matter what, people usually work together with all of them. And we have managed to do that. Nobody asked us to do it. We just do it because that's the right thing to do. Just like the clearing of the, the garbage and whatever. We know that it's been from the West Bay or from the landing, but we still clear the garbage because it's the right thing to do. 
but I do not want to be faced with 100 to 120 people living just for, what, 50 meters away from me, having their time to come there when it's a residential area. Now, the landing knew that these, this was a residential area. The original plan was, they call it a cottage park. I've never heard of cottage park before. This is an idea that is not an area that I think would be our area. Try to do your cottage park where there's a lot more room and you can actually create a cottage park, put a playground in there, let the people come and stuff. Create buses where they can go to the lake and stuff like that. Put them into a safe place. Bus them over to the provincial park where there is lots more room and whatnot. Now, if you try to swim, as you've heard from the Sprout Lake landing, it is full of weeds. Even just to kayak in there, it's hard to manage to get your paddle in those weeds and stuff like that. So no one has worried about that. The carp that are in there, when the carp come in, they have a huge turbulence. That whole water turns brown. Our bay turns brown when they're in there trying to feed and stuff like that. Now, if you've ever watched from above and watched when the carp come in and stuff like that, it doesn't just create the little bay that we're in. It creates all of where Sprout Landing is, all of that area. Now, we reported about the carp right away to fisheries when we noticed they first started off, and no one seemed to be very concerned about it. We reported about the, the, um, the uh, lily pads, that there's a changing thing. No one worried about that. When we had some weird kind of uh, weeds growing into the lake, we reported that. No one seemed to be worried about them. You know, with, um, when you have boat traffic, people come from all over the place, and yes, they bring whatever whatever they have on their on their trailers or their boat motors, they haven't cleaned their boats as well as they probably should have. We don't have in BC as, as much as they have in Ontario where I am first, first born and raised. They have people that stop, they have stations there where you have to stop and actually get checked and stuff like that, that you're not carrying any um, evasive uh, material in your boat. Now these people, it's a wonderful idea that we're going to plan on having tourists that are not going to have any requirements to be on Sprout Lake. But of course they will be. Why would they come to Sprout Lake? Why would they come to that beautiful lake location and not use the lake and then they choose to go everywhere else but the lake or very minimally at the lake? I don't, I don't believe that. But we're the ones who are going to be responsible for that. I don't want to be the person that says, Oh, well, our tour, our area did not benefit because we didn't have tour. The McLean Mill, look at what the site happened with there. What, ha what happened with that? Tra or our train, it's, it's disappeared. It was supposed to be the answer to tourism and whatnot. We're going to be the answer for tourism, our neighborhood, so that we can build 15 cottages here, with, fill it with people and stuff like that, and we're not supposed to be affected. So after 36 years of paying taxes, it means nothing to any of you. These people, the 69 people that were listed on this petition, is only a small ma matter of people, number of people that are at Sprout Lake that are upset, are very upset about this. They don't want our lifestyle uh, disrupted. You know, we're, we're a residence and you protect your residence. We appreciate the Sprout Lake Landing, what they do offer. They have a beautiful setting there and we certainly have always supported them and stuff like that. But I don't think that they need to move into a residential area and have it now reserved to commercial. As my husband pointed out to you, there is no restrictions on that. What makes it say that we paid an over a year, a couple of years time, oh, the cabins didn't work out, we couldn't build them, we didn't have enough people, I'm sorry, our business plan didn't work out. Now we've got to sell these. And we're going we're gonna to stratify this, which was Ross Mitchell's first plan. We're going to do this cottage park and we're going to stratify it. We're going to make our money by getting rid of these cabins. People can live there. There are places for the permanent uh, dwellings for people here in town or they can be seasonal or whatever else. If you're gonna allow that to happen, then you make sure that there's restrictions on that those do not get sold because there's gonna be no control. Sprout Lake Landing, the management told me that he was gonna be responsible. He's the only one there that's gonna be responsible for policing all these people. Now that's 120 feet, 20 people just in the cottages that he's full. And then he's got his cat, cat uh, how, um, his, what, how many rooms there are, eight? And then this, you've got all the people, the dining room is full. He's got people going to get ice cream and tacos and everything else. So imagine how many people are milling around there and you've got one person in there who's going to be able to run that. Now, I'm a retired teacher. So we're looking at four classrooms full 
of kids. I'm not allowed to, I was never allowed to teach for a classroom full of kids and be responsible for that. There were other people that were supposed to be there. But Sam said he would be able to be that. He'll be there at night. He'll be able to do whatever he's going to do, noise control, whatever. Now, his noise control might be quite different from my noise control. But right now, we still have a peaceful, peaceful neighborhood. We have a place when we go down on the dock, we can actually see the stars and stuff like that. But as Cynthia pointed out, what about that light pollution? You're going to have to have lots of lights in there. What about traffic coming in and out at any time of the night into those places and whatnot? If you've ever heard, I mean, and lake noise travels very easily. Now, if you're, if you want to swim, if you want to kayak, if you want to paddleboard and whatever else, there's lots of that activity there. Now you're going to add 120 people more who are possibly going to do that in within our day. I don't think so. Now, when those boats come into that bay to Sprout Lake Landing, there are people peeing off their wharves. They've just been out there boating and whatnot. They got to go to the bathroom. Many of the neighbors there are talking about people immediately peeing. They're, they're um, coming in. The lake is totally brown in that little bay and whatnot. I don't know what's happening to that, to that whole area. Now, there, when all these tests were done by septic experts and whatnot, I don't see the soil samples. Why have we been smelling odor for so long? How many years has this, these systems not worked that were supposedly, they're supposed to be the state of the art, but they weren't working. And it, it's not a nice smell when you're barbecuing and you've got people that come to visit you and stuff like that. You kind of have to move away from that. It's terrible to do that. When you walk by, if you're going to go to the store, you go get an ice cream cone and you have to hold your nose when you go by. That's very unpleasant for people who are walking by and stuff like that. Now, this is supposedly, again, remember, people who have put these places, there have been laws and everything else, but have supposedly this has been the, the things that are supposed to be working, but they haven't. Nobody took those water quality samples, those soil samples that should have been done. Who's taking the, who's seeing what's happening in that creek or in the little spawning creek or in the pond? or checking around what's happening with the water quality at Sprout Lake. Who's checking all of that? There's, I don't see any records of that. We haven't been told of any of that. I don't know if anyone's ever gonna continue monitoring it, but I think we really start needing to pick this up because if we wanna be here still for another seven generations at this same place, enjoying this water, no matter how it's been, no matter what it's gonna, how it's gonna change, hopefully we've been stewards and actually looked after our place. And absolutely, my husband has just began to find out about, and my children, about what, it's, what has happened in his history for, of the Aboriginal people, of his great-grandmother, what she had to endure. And we've had to listen, as we've all had to listen, about residential schools and everything and how that hurts. And again, what do you feel like? You feel like you're not being heard. Nobody cared about what happens to this property that we bought. We're suddenly just a resident. It doesn't matter because the tourist needs more. Isn't that exactly what we did to our Aboriginal people for many years? How many years? 150 more? We came over, took their lands, stole their children. You go into school, stamp out the Indian. And all of a sudden, when you start feeling like you have an identity, you are now being walked over again. Nobody cares. Because why do we have to do this? For the regional sake, for tourists, for whatever. And we've had many, many of these plans fail. Now, why have they failed? And why do we now have to be the people that have to suffer through this? I'm sorry, but I hope that these directors are listening and listening to the passion that we all have. We didn't sit here in our, in our houses having to come together to make a response and spend hours trying to do both reports. We're not experts, but we live there and we know what our lifestyle is like. And we know what the rest of the lake lifestyle is about. And believe me, nobody's ever perfect. And there is no perfect people. And summertime, it's a party place. There are places where you have guaranteed parties and whatnot. And this, this will continue. You're going to add a, a big complex right in the middle of our neighborhood, right there, where we're all going to have to deal with that. You're not going to deal with it in your backyard. You don't, you don't live where we are. You're not coming. You're not, you're not having to deal with this. But for the sake of tourists, I'm supposed to deal with it. And I'm sorry, I say no, absolutely not. And do not respect my 
husband and, and my children, as they're learning about their Aboriginal, Aboriginal culture, to understand what it was like for their elders. And now they're starting to go, I understand, because this is what it must feel like when somebody else makes a decision that is supposedly for the betterment of all, betterment for other people, but not for you, not for, for our neighborhood, not for the people that sign that petition. And that was only at the very beginning. Now we can go door to door, we can make a referendum on this, not a problem. But I really think that people really need to think about how far are you ready to push? You really want our lake to go downhill that fast? Now hopefully our, our people before us, our neighbors before us, have looked after our lake so far that we can enjoy it. And so far our quality of water is still swimmable. It's still a joy to be on there. But you want to do this, this resort? Kim owns five acres. She can put a whole lot more cabins on there. Behind in there, there are a lot more acreage prob uh, properties that are a lot large, that, that are large as well. How many of these things are you going to continue to allow to happen? So if you're going to allow this to happen, you can allow Kim to have them. We get to have three more cabins, at least on our property. We have, we're just under an acre. So according to the stats, we should be putting in three more cabins in our, our place as well. So can our neighbors? So what are we looking at really for dancers? Or is it just going to be for one place? And this is for, this is not for the good for our neighborhood. It might be good for some people, but not for our neighbors. So please vote no and, and uh, listen to your residents for a change and what, what our effects are. Because physical, mental health, we're going to be, we're not going to be having the same quality of life anymore that we have had. Thank you. Thank you for that. Is there anyone else that would like to speak for the first time? I have two people on the list that would like to speak for a second time. So yes, Chair recognizes you in the back. Curtis Soden, 10745 Lakeshore Road. I don't want to prove this plan that they're talking about doing. I clean up the lake for years. I've picked up truck loads, sometimes two, three truck loads a year from the bottom of the lake, not the surface, the bottom of the lake. After the construction of the or of Sprout Landing, it took me four, five, six years, and I still haven't got it all out. I'm talking, there's still paint cans in the creek, uh, in Winer Creek itself. I was picking up garden hoses this year already. When it gets a little bit warmer, I will be going swimming in there again to get the rest of it out. Uh, the creek levels were a little too low for me to get it last year for some of these things. And then the effluent in Winer Creek from the sewage issues was too bad to even put my head in the water in that area. I have swam all around the West Bay for years, pulling boats behind me to fill them up all the time. Um, the garbage levels are insane when traffic is really busy. It is not a safe area to be swimming in the start with. I try to do it on low traffic hours, um, but it is still dangerous. I have swam uh, before they put the dock in. In the summer times, it's less than three. Um, I've watched boats come in and out of there from underwater and everything else. The turbulence that you like to get the point across with the, the turbulence of the silt. When the boat goes by, it's making a trench in the silt. It's not, they're not in the water. Sometimes their props are actually under the silt, turning up the silt. That's how, how bad it gets. And we're drinking that. It plugs up our water systems. You've heard the West Bay saying, well, their water system didn't plug up. You, you can't replace that. It, it goes everywhere in the lake, or at least in our bay. And you're talking about adding additional water systems. Um, they're probably just going to tap into their current one for all I care. I don't, it doesn't really matter, but it's still going to be having the same water problems that we already have. The, the density is the, the main problem here. Um, how can you address a density issue with increasing density 
that doesn't it doesn't make sense. The tourism, like I've lived there for 33 years. I've seen the changes in the lakes. Every time their septic system goes, all of a sudden we have a bloom of weeds in the in the lake. And then a year or two later, the weeds dissipate, which is great until the next sewer system leaks again. And then we have a huge bloom again. The system has been leaking for years. It has not been maintained for years. And all these systems that they're talking about require high maintenance or a lot of maintenance. Our septic systems alone require maintenance. If, and you can see from their pictures that they have not maintained their septic system for years. When Lenny Rose went there, she couldn't even get into um, some of the places to check the filters and check these things because they were covered in not weeds and they were going up the buildings or the septic system they had there. And you're encouraging additional septic systems that will, again, not be maintained um, and the sewer system company that um, the cells, who the owner is, who's supposed to be maintained for third or who does this things, was pumping raw sewage on the ground. That is who you are encouraging to do this development. I absolutely can't understand how we have. It's irate. I don't understand why you would have a septic system designed to fail the, the, the last two systems were state-of-the-art as everyone said but they have failed and you're and you're encouraging a third system to come in here not be maintained it's on they stripped all the soil off i can't remember how many years ago uh, they were hauling it all out when they did the clearing it's literally just bedrock a little bit of crush um, from when they were doing the blast and they, they didn't excavate it out there is no um, natural soils until you hit the repertory, the, the borders. And again, it leaks through there. You know, some people were saying like, oh, you, you don't understand the sewer issues. The sewer issues are there. It's been a problem. It's been a problem for years. A new system, I don't believe is going to be any better. I know um, some uh, experts will probably say different. Um, but you start talking about, you know, water bombers worth of water bomb or of sewer going through the systems every day. I don't care how much, um, you plan on it. That's a lot of water and it's on bedrock. The, I think that's probably one of the main re reasons why the current system, when it's under capacity, they're not at full capacity, still is leaking into the lake when they're not. They're not even running at full steam. They haven't been running at full steam for, for years, and they're still having the same issues. It's a summer creek. It's, you know, you have months of no rain. Everywhere else is dry, and all of a sudden, that's the only spot. There's a, a spring, as we call it. It's a sewer spring. You know, the, the smell is absolutely atrocious, especially when they're not maintaining and it's not going to get better. It's only going to get worse. I've seen um, other developments and stuff. Um, like I've, I did a duplex and I worked at some of these other hotels and other golf courses that are under construction. I've seen how some of these systems are, but those places have huge um, septic systems, much larger than what uh, I've seen in these proposals. And they're not near creeks. They're not, you know, 30 meters from a creek or they're not on sitting on bedrock. They have natural soils. They're um, oh, far, far away uh, to really sensitive areas. We already have these problems. And like everyone's saying about the, the swimming on the docks and stuff like that. Uh, I was just talking to my neighbor, John. John was saying that there, he sees them every day peeing off the dock in the summertime like it's just it's absolutely disgusting and now we're going to be encouraging another 120 people to do the same or 90 people or whatever it, it doesn't make sense i know i'm being a, a dead horse here but i'm trying to get the point across that we do not want this thank you thank you for that
Is there anybody that would like to speak for the first time? And hopefully this will be some new information. Yes, recognize Anne. Yeah, okay, I'll be brief. My name is Ann Taylor. I, I live at 9644 Lakeshore. And I recognize the need or at least the desire for Port Alberni to develop other um, forms of income and including tourism seems like a, like an obvious one with all of the dollars that go roaring by towards Tofino um, every summer. But this just isn't it. Just this project just is the wrong place. You know, you don't put 15 houses on a chunk of rock up across a narrow road from a dock that's not swimmable and, and think that that's going to be a success. You know, people may want to go on the on the Francis Barclay and, and do the other things, but I, I agree with the other people who have said that they will want access to the lake. So my point is that, yeah, tourism is a good idea, but just not this project. It's in the wrong place. It's not going to work. It's dysfunctional. That's it. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak for the first time? Chair recognizes Jody. Um, the property where Dallas Camp is. Uh, sorry, name there. and address, please. Sorry. Um, I'm Jody Voss. Um, my husband and I um, have. Um, resided at 10633 and 10637 uh, Tilly Road for um, 40 years. The property where Dallas Cafe is situated was zoned commercial years ago when little thought was given to the environment. Winer Creek and the wetlands connected to it are salmon habitats and trout habitats. They provide refuge to many other species of animals and it makes no sense at this time in history to make this change to zoning when we know from experience that it would be potentially detrimental to the environment. The proposed changes and development will not provide housing to folks who need it. It will be people, quite on the contrary, that as it is proposed are coming for a short time and a good time. And that will definitely affect our, our community and our environment. It may sound like a trivial thing, to be concerned about the noise and light quality in the place we call home, but it is not. The owners of Sprouts Landing have attempted to assure residents that control of the noise will be in place, but we all know people come to holiday planning for their own enjoyment, often without considerations of the neighbors. There will be no way to police the noise and challenges a hundred strangers every day will make. Should this zone change occur, the proposal should include a covenant that connects it to Sprouts Landing commercial property so that it cannot be sold off and turned into a strata or made into a high density um, neighborhood or, or subdivision. <clears throat> that would show some goodwill on the governing body to protect the area from future sales and changes beyond those requested at this time. I want to trust our political system. I want to believe in the empathy and integrity of the elected representatives of the ACRD to be true and the supported voice of our neighborhood and the public. I want to believe that the process is fair and the residential districts within the ACRD are managed with the community members' needs and quality of life almost in their decisions. Thank you. Is there anyone at this time that would like to speak for the first time? Chair recognizes Joe. Uh, Joe Monrefe from uh, 10016 Sterling on Crescent. Um, first of all, I'd like to make sure my property and my home values are not affected one bit from this. Um, but I don't like to be negative either. Uh, I'm, I'm very cynical. Um, this project, as has been pointed out, is strictly for profit. And it's driving a square peg into a round hole, as far as I can see. We are trying to attract tourists. I'm all for change. Uh, I think that we should be looking at all sorts of other alternatives to bring people to Stroke Lake, but to jam this kind of thing. And you've heard the, you've heard the political implications, you've heard the, the community implications of what this is going to do to these people. Um, I just think that it, it would be, it would be a misdemeanor, misdemeanor to do this to, uh, to the neighborhood. Um, if, it were, if it was the likes of a seniors complex or a detox center, neither of which I'm ready for yet, but if, if it was the likes of that, I think you'd have an entirely different reception. But this is strictly for the profit. Um, 
we heard of all the huge technical things that can be overcome, but they didn't tell us how much rain we're going to have in the next two years or how much people are going to drink. So I really don't even, don't even believe the technical side of it can be accommodated. So um, I'm afraid I would devote to really strong negative against this development. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak for the first time? Chair recognizes. Are we good? Okay, Phil Edgewell, 9231 Tabor Road. And so there's there's been some appeals to uh, regional directors tonight. I'd also like to make an appeal and I'd like them the next time this uh, bylaw amendment comes up, we'll vote to think about two things. Uh, and the first would be, you know, we, we have a regional director that I think has represented the values of Sprout Lakers very, very well over her, her term, Penny. And so, um, I think I would like them to listen to Penny because I think Penny has a better pulse on Sproat Lake residents than maybe regional directors from Beaver Creek, Cherry Creek, and so on. The second thing I'd like regional directors to think about is how would you vote? Uh, should there be an amendment to the zoning bylaw adjacent to your property, change from residential to to uh, commercial when when you uh, when you vote next time? Thanks. Thanks to the regional district for hearing. Thank you. Is there anybody that would else would like to speak for the first time? Uh, at this time, I will ask staff or the applicant if they'd like to speak. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just a, a couple of things. Um, I believe that uh, Mr. Higgs is, um, maybe his letter is circulated. I think it was provided here this evening. Um, and as general manager of Sprout Lake Landing, he does state that it's not the intent of Sprout Lake Landing to attract people to come here with boats. Um, perhaps when I said that there'd be access to the docks and the cottages, it certainly wasn't uh, for any form of boat launching. It was pedestrian access only um, where people can, like today, have a, a beautiful picture of Mount Aerosmith and, and the lake and all the docks down and up the lake from there. Um, and it's to bring people to the region to enjoy the cultural, the natural, um, and some of the other economic activities that there are. I don't know if any of you have ever traveled to visit Zixin in Banfield. It's a heck of an experience. It's similar to going to Haida Gwaii. And um, sorry, I get <laughs> literally get shivers when I think of it because I've been to both places and they are equal. And that's the quality you're talking about here. And that's what the intent is in terms of marketing strategy for for uh, the cottages and Sprout Lake Landing generally. Um, with, with respect to everybody, the point has been made that there are going to be now 15 homes on this property. I believe if you refer to the C6 zone, that only one residential use per property is permitted in the commercial zone. Um, these are cottages. These would be uses that would be permitted in the C6 zone. They're intended for use by the traveling public. They're here on short stays, as is included in the definition in the zoning bylaw. Um, could be people who are here working, meaning they stay longer than three nights or a week, but they're intended for the traveling public. So um, I just wanted to, to point that out. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate perhaps to ask Mr. Seymour, and it would have to be done with, with your uh, permission and acknowledgement, 
about the emergency actions that were taken to deal with the septic system failure that occurred some time ago. Um, and whether in terms of the um, public health guidelines or, or the standard practice manual, whether as emergency procedures, whether that was appropriate, not as a standard procedure, but as an emergency procedure. Uh, there were different alternatives possibly available. This was the one that was selected. I don't know if you can comment on that or not, or if you'll permit that. Thank you. Uh, if he's part of your delegation, then absolutely. He can, if he's part of your delegation, yes, you can, we yes. can call him. Yes, he's, yes, thank you. Thanks. Mr. Seymour, are you there? I am, yes. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Um, I do understand the short-term issues that they had at the wastewater treatment plant has been ongoing. Uh, it was under previous ownership, uh, was a big part of the problem, and primarily due to a lack of maintenance. Uh, I understand that has been changed for the new ownership, and uh, reviewing it with Phil Buchanan, he did state that he was up there and did review this with uh, Ministry of Health or Island Health Authorities. I'm not too sure on the exact timing of that. Uh, the method that he employed was to take the treated effluent. It was not raw sewage. This is what comes out of the final clarifier to be discharged to the mounds. And it was sprayed over the ground immediately around the same area into a forested area. We've called those sorts of systems what they call an Alberta at grade type system. It was a very short term. It was a reasonable consideration on his part to prevent further environmental impacts to the area and was able to mitigate it and monitor it and correct the system after the fact. Uh, I can't say as to what I would have done had I been on site other than to consider what he had done was a reasonable act under a reasonable consideration, not like to have been done. Uh, it would have been better that the system had been maintained, but when Phil came on site, he noticed the deficiencies and he worked to get them corrected. So although there are concerns by the residents, it was a fair and reasonable consideration of how to address this, as opposed to having a, a septage facility come in and haul the material away, because at that time it would have still been discharging uh, overland or uh, to the ditch as it had. So we did rectify that as quickly as he could. I hope that covers the issue. Thank you. Thank you. Does the applicant have anything, anything further? Okay, at this time, uh, we're asking for people, uh, once again, if anybody hasn't spoke for the first time. Hmm. Okay, I'll be uh, looking at people for a second time. So we have um, on, in the chat again, and we have Gary Rutter once again. So we'll listen to the chat first, and then Gary, thanks. Thank you. So we have... Uh number of chats again from Stacey Gaga. Uh, I will begin with uh, the first first comment, picking up on where we left off uh, when I was reading them previously. Uh, wouldn't it be possible to have Hetherington Industries empty the septic tank more regularly in correlation to guest capacity as a safeguard to ensure that no overflow issues ever? There is no overflow issues ever. We tend to have our septic tank emptied before it's needed after an influx of dedicated summer friends and family visit us here at the lake. I think I read something in the MSR report about a monitoring device that could indicate volume in the septic tanks. And then Mike Seymour makes uh, a comment about the sewage capacity. Uh, 15 cottages would have a daily design flow under the sewage system regulation of 4,500 gallons per day or 20,500 liters per day. The SSR is the, is the regulatory authority. We will provide an operation and maintenance plan to deal with daily, weekly, and monthly maintenance observations and requirements. We'll also recommend on monitoring solids, levels, and regulatory reporting. Then Stacey Gaga makes comment, uh, maybe the owner is willing to have covenants regarding future use of the land to alleviate future use concerns. House rules for respecting private landowner neighbors and enforced quiet policies are not uncommon at other resorts. Stacey continues as one of the biggest NIMBYs in this valley for stopping adverse environmental societal effects from proposed industrial developments that will, will cause deleterious effects. 
This project has the ability to mitigate concerns presented so far tonight as expressed by Ian Sperling during our discussions. Animal habitat is the utmost, is my utmost concern. If it is protected, so is our community. This is very important to Ian Sperling and Sam, his manager, especially for the guests they will be marketing to for ecotourism who will come here to experience the wild green space and beauty of our community. Uh, Stacy continues, good point about hulls of boats bringing invasive species to our lake. We need to address that. Covenants should be part of the rezoning for use now and in the future, like a lot of us have in our land too. Gary Rudder made uh, a comment. I don't agree with Stacy's comment that this project has the ability to mitigate concerns presented so far tonight. I have heard nothing about how Sprout Lake Landing will solve the issue of limited access to the lake, insufficient dock space, impact of turbidity and water quality, and effectively creating a commercial dock with insufficient boat space. Stacy Gaga continues. Uh, Thank you, Gary Rudder, for expressing this. The reason I believe the owner will mitigate all of our concerns is because I sat down with him and spoke with him about every concern I read in letters before I met with him. I, re I read every letter because I respect fellow lake owners who watch for potential damages to the biodiversity that I, that I have dedicated my life to fight for. That will also affect my life here too. I believe Ian and I believe Sam, when they say they want to keep everything that is important, to us intact, not just for us, but for those who want, uh, for those they want as guests. Gary Rudder made a comment. They can say what they want. The fact still remains. When you increase density at a limited access point on the lake, you exacerbate an already problematic situation, not improvement. Stacy Gaga makes a comment. Yes, Jody. Little thought was given to all the watersheds in the valley when they logged the mountains to the ground, often over salmon spawning creeks and critical ungulate historical migratory routes in old growth forests, much of which continues with only a minority of voices speaking out against this harvesting as it continues to this day, even right here at Spirit Lake. That's it. Thank you. Uh, so I had Gary Rudder. Hello, Penny, it's Gary. Uh, can you hear me again? Yes, your name and address again, please. Gary Rudder, uh, 10773 uh, Lakeshore Road. Uh, just wanted to, to respond to a, a couple of gentlemen that uh, uh, again said, stated that the intended purpose of uh, these accommodations or the, the type of people they're, they're targeting is people that want to explore our beautiful area and enjoy the tourism, the opportunities here, the uh, uh, Lady Rose going out to Long Beach, et cetera, hiking, biking, whatever. I mean, that's all fine. Um, it's, 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 uh, uh, admirable, but, but the bottom line is the number one reason, again, that people want to rent or own, uh, next to the lake is for access to the lake itself for recreational purposes on the lake. If they, uh, advertise these cottages for rent, um, they're not going to, I, I'm assuming, I mean, they're a business. They're not gonna turn away somebody that, that is asking to rent their cottages because I'm, I'm sure they're not gonna do some sort of screening up front and say, okay, are, are, are you coming to use the lake? Are you going out to Long Beach or are you going hiking? Um, they're in business. They're gonna rent to the people that are, that are showing them money. And the people that are coming here, the number one reason, again, is for access to the lake. And that is our problem, is the access, the density. We already have a problem with that, and this will just make it worse. They, uh, they can say what they want about the type of people they're going to get in, but uh, reality is they're going to rent to whoever, whoever provides them the money. Uh, thank you, Penny. All right, thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak for the second time? Chair, recognize Barb. Speaker on, name and address again. <laughs> Hi, my name is Barbara Smith and I live at 10707 Lakeshore Road. Uh, thank you again for uh, allowing me to uh, speak for a minute. I'll, I will be short. I see the time keeping up here. 
Um, so my husband and I have had our property for approximately 35 years at the at the lake, but many many people have had it far had their properties far long far far longer, and they have over time as as you've heard many many of the community residents have worked tirelessly on the official community plan on cleaning up on um, different kinds of works programs at the um, at the lake. And so they're dedicated to the neighborhood. They're dedicated for years and years and years. And we have coexisted with the hotel and the management for years. We, we my husband and I have spent thousands of dollars on meals and accommodation for friends and family over the year. And we're happy to support a local business. However, the latest management appears to be an octopus which has spread its tentacles far out into the lake and this humongous dock and now wants to engulf the neighborhood in transient housing. The density, you've heard about the density and how that is um, far, far too high. It, it's between two, um, two streams, a fish uh, spawning stream and uh, a waterway on the other side. It couldn't be a worse situation. Add that to the um, the impact on the land, to the lake access issues, and you've heard about that. The the mud that gets stirred up, the pollution that happens, the stuff that gets to tossed off the docks and and the boats. You've also heard about a businesses that they have a bottom line. All businesses do. They have the uh, they have their terms in terms of viability and profits. However, the residents also have their bottom line. We know that when a residential area is changed in character and tone, it can lose its value. We also, this character and tone of our area will become one of transient people staying for a few days and then moving on. We are a residential population that cares deeply about their property and does not want ourselves or our neighbors to have to deal with noise, land, and water pollution. We know that short-term rentals of this magnitude do change the character of the area. And do you think that 15 Airbnbs on one resident, residential block will devalue our properties? Realistically, of course they will. And that's our bottom line and why we encourage the ACRD directors to vote no to this rezoning and the developer's proposal. We would, my husband and I believe that it's important to be a good neighbor. It's invaluable to have good neighbors and we will strive to be a good neighbor to Sprout Lake Landing, we will. We don't want an us and them or a confrontational uh, relationship. We want a, a, a good neighborhood. We want to have something that uh, sustains us. So our advice to Sport Lake Landing is start over. Don't use Ross Mitchell's plan. That's out. Start over with your own plan and your own vision. Engage with the neighbors and the community for input. Have a survey. Talk to us. In the end, it might be entirely what you want, but it might be what you need. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak for a second time? And hopefully it'll be new information coming forward. Uh, I see Ms. Soden, Ms. Rayla. Frida Soden, 1074 Lake Shore. Just want to point out that the comment regarding the boats and the trailers that people won't be coming with those. When we had our meeting with, uh, our private meeting with this, with uh, Sprout Lake uh, landing crew, they said that the people would bring their trailers and they leave them at the provincial camp, at the provincial park and they could put their boats and that they had a designated number of boat slips for the, for their guests on their own dock. So that comment about people going biking or using other vessels or whatever, that was part of their plan because that's what they told us. So I just wanted to make it clear because I don't think that you were aware of that, sir, but that boat trailers was part of their plan. So thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, I have Chris Law, and then we'll come back to you. Chris Law, 10693 Tilly Road, Port Alberni. I just want to just quickly go over a few things about the septic system. So there was questions if the new system would address the problems with the old system. Well, the new system is only going to be for the ca cabins or the houses, the new additional houses. The current system is still going to be functioning for the cafe, the restaurant, and the hotel part of it. So one of the reasons they want to have these cabins is to increase business to the hotel, the cafe, and the restaurant. So that those people, even though where they stay, it's going to be on a new system, this new development and the additional people going to the restaurant is going to put um, strain on the old system that appears to still be uh, not functioning properly. And then as far as the process of determining what's acceptable practices and what's a prudent, a prudent uh, uh, decision on how to deal with the problem with the effluent flowing down into the ditch and into the fish creek. Well, we covered this off at the at the public hearing last year, and it was uh, Phil Buchanan was one of the persons who was monitoring that or facilitating that for Sprout Lake Landing at the time. So it's it's, it's not a new issue that we brought up, and it's not it shouldn't be a big surprise because so many residents brought this issue up with the septic. It's a smelly septic. Maybe it's treated. It's still, I wouldn't want to drink it. I wouldn't want it flowing to my fish fish stream, and I don't think it's prudent to pump it into the the forest. I'm not a professional, so I wouldn't make that call. Island Health didn't think it was professional. I made a I made a phone call to the Association of Engineers and Geoscientists. I didn't want to be specific because I didn't want to go through the process of filing a formal complaint with the association about this. But we have to take professional reliance very serious because so much relies on professional reliance in this province. If somebody says, I'm doing this, I'm a professional and I can do it, that's not something you should be doing when you're not doing the best practices. And when I talked to both Island Health and the Association of Engineers and Geoscientists in talking in a vague way, the best practice is calling a pumper truck up and getting hauled away. That's best practice. Um, it, in emergency, there's six months notice. Um, and then also the problem was there was no maintenance on the site, but there was no maintenance on that site for the six months the old, new owners owned it too. Invasive species were growing over, you couldn't get into the buildings. So um, I, I sort of will call that, but we chose not to go with the formal complaint with the association because we just didn't want to be those people. Um, that's the way you find out. If somebody really wants to find out if that's the, that was a prudent thing, you have to make the complaint. Um, yeah, so that I just wanted to address that. We sort of researched it. And the other thing too is you get some, the, the reason professional reliance is super important on these things is because a professional signs off on these things. They create a management plan. Island Health doesn't inspect it. Island Health approves it as long as a professional signs off on it. And then once it's approved, nobody monitors after that. It's up to the public to do what we did and report when there's an issue. Um, you know, there are there were strict guidelines on how this system was supposed to be maintained. They weren't followed. But it's up to the public. And like I said, once the system's approved, Island Health rubber stamps it as long as a professional signs off on it and then it's up to up to the owners to do their diligence and it's up to the public to monitor it and do their complaints because nobody else is checking okay thank you all right thank you is there any uh, yes kimberly hello um, name and address and <laughs> kimberly smith at 10750 lakeshore road um i talked about the our sweat lodge and and that's my and my husband who is first nations our way of prayer and when i say that i just wanted to clarify that when we pray there you know the frogs sing while we're in the lodge praying so when we're praying we're praying with all of the nature that's on our property that a bear has come and looked in our sweat lodge before and you know, like that's a big blessing for me. That's it's medicine. So I, I just want to say that there's a lot of medicine that happens when we're praying. Um, I have noticed a reduction in the frogs already. Um, it would crush my heart to not hear them singing. Because when we sing, we get quiet. And then they sing back to us. It's a relationship. And I want to say that about all the all the animals that are there, 
And that's my heart. That's my connection to creator. That land is that way for me too. We pray for the water every time we, we do that. You know, I, 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 I just say that it's going to, uh, it could, and then there would be no reversing it. Yeah. Change my, my house of prayer, my way of prayer. You know, like if you had people up there just cranking the music, right? When I'm praying, that would change my dynamics. Not that I don't appreciate that, but I'd rather give a props. <laughs> that's just when I'm praying. That's what I would like to do. So I just, um, I worry about my quality of life and my prayer and my connection to creator and the, and the ground and the animals and everything, all of it. I chose that place for that reason. I chose that place so I could pray there. It was a, it was a very specific choice. Like I said, it's surrounded by water. There's springs that come up there. It keeps it wet, so I have to worry about the fire. Like I, that was, you know, I prayed to get that place. That's that's what I did. So when I see this, I'm like, okay. So I just want to say that I'd like to say a quick just prayer for all of the people that are making the decisions here. Please, Creator, guide them with their hearts, guide them with their spirits, guide them with their own correct. Um, connection to creator and I pray for the right choice for all of us for all of us that's not from my heart how I'm feeling because I, I I feel nervous that 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 could be taken away from me and from my husband you know he went to residential school praying in that sweat lodge is how he gets by Because nothing else has worked for him. So it's really, I worry. Because that's his, that's his hospital. That's his mental health. That's his church. That's his prayer. It's what keeps him okay from what's happened to him in his life. I said, I just needed to express that. Because it's really important. We're all important. We all mean something. And our connection to our land and our homes all mean something. And I know the almighty dollar means something too, but I just want to, I'm praying that everybody really goes to their heart and spirit and ask the creator what the creator would say. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, yes, yeah, Brian Soden, recognizing. Brian Soden, 10745 Lakeshore Road. Just a couple of things here. I just wonder how Sprout Lake Landing is going to control all these people. Uh, at, we have on our lake a lot of existing Airbnbs and, and rentals that aren't listed. And uh, most of the people are coming to enjoy Sprout Lake, not to drive to Banfield or drive out to Tofino. They're here to use the lake. Uh, an example here, when Sprout Lake Landing has had a large event, We've had people parked in our driveway and they've even come into onto our property and have gotten quite aggressive when we asked them to leave. How are they can control that? Another thing is years ago, we were had a petition out against houseboats coming onto Sprout Lake and we were able to have it designated in certain areas on Sprout Lake. But these houseboats come and they party and they go to these designated areas and they leave garbage and refuse and, and fecal matter and stuff in the on the beaches. How, it's not controlled. They say they're going to control it, but this is another example. And who has to clean up that? Sprout Lake and the volunteers have to clean up after this. People coming here, they're just tourists coming to use the lake. And now we're going to have Sprout Lake Landing with all these people, and I'm sure they're coming to enjoy the lake. Yes, but there's going to be parking where they're not supposed to be parking. They're going to be putting garbage in the lake because they do now. Coming from Sprout Lake Landing, people buy their beer and stuff. They throw it in our ditches, garbage from there. They don't walk back and put it in a refuse container. No, they have no control over it. it Maybe on site, but they won't be controlling once the people leave the door. And that's what affects us. And we have to deal with it, not Sprout Lake Landing. Not the fishing duck that has the houseboats, 
No, it is the residents that have to deal with this aftermath. And it's not going to change. It doesn't matter what they say to you. They can't control what people do. And they're going to bring a large influx of these people into our neighborhood. They bought this place knowing it was zoned residential. They knew what it was, and they still know what it is. But they're trying to force it down our throats and make you change the residential zoning. And that is the reason why we're here. We don't want it to be changed from residential. We want it to remain the same, not commercialize it. We're not a commercial zone. We're residential, single family residences. If we wanted to live in a big city with high rises and lots of density, we would live there. We chose to live here 36 years ago and because it's a rural place. We have nice neighbors. We get along, but Scroat Lake Landing is not proven to be friendly to the neighborhood. So I vote no, and I would like the directors to vote no on this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, recognize. Hardy? Uh, Hardy Fink, uh, 8591 Bothwell Road. Um, my wife is saying, don't speak again, but <laughs> I, I want to offer uh, the experience with the houseboats as an object lesson. So about 20 years ago or so, uh, we bought a property two over from the fish and duck. About uh, we, 32 years ago, but 20 years ago, they wanted houseboats there. There was a community meeting. It was agreed seven maximum. Okay, seven maximum. Two years later, I wrote to each director of the regional district for your time. Uh, and now there are 11. <laughs> Nothing was ever done. In the meantime, it's 14. So the new owner, Gary, wonderful neighbor, we have no problem uh, with him as a person. But he's, and of course, he's bringing a lot of tourism dollars through the houseboat business and the pub and so on. So, but that's not his interest. His interest is to make money. So, he bought that fish and duck a couple of years ago, just before the pandemic. And then he bought the property between us and the fish and duck as a, a residential property. So, uh, now 14 houseboats, and he needs more space. He extended the dock about 50 feet. Then he started renting out pontoon boats. So, he's got three pontoon boats that are being rented out. And motorboats, and he does tours uh, for uh, wakeboarding tours on the lake and sightseeing tours, whatever. Then uh, he bought the neighbor property, a residential property. Well, what nothing would do but cut down about 200 trees. There was a forest between Bothwell Road and the lake on the residential property that turned it into a parking lot for the fish and duck. And now the fence between the fish and duck and that property is gone. It's all integrated. And, you know, so is is the residential property now become commercial property. So all these things are just happening. Uh, then there was a longer ramp, cement ramp, so that all the houseboats out for repairs. So now uh, when the high, high water is there, we've got about 30 feet of cement underwater. It used to be some other kind of habitat. So these things sort of permitted to happen. They were possibly predictable. They were certainly unintended that these are consequences. So now what is being recommended or suggested here is you've got a swampland or a wetland on one side, a lake on the other side, and two streams, salmon streams. In the, in the middle of a um, lot of stuff is a giant rock. You're going to build 15 homes on it. What can go wrong? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak for a second time? Would the applicants like to reply to anything? No. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, uh, there's more chats. Alex, please. There's just a couple here. So, Stacey Gaika, you are correct, Gary Rudder, that they cannot vet guests, but they can promote sustainable ecotourism and make suggestions, have rules about lake use, etc. This is a very productive discussion. And after meeting Ian, I know he is taking all of this in and will accommodate our community's concerns, needs, and desires. Stacey Kaka continues, uh, nice Rolling Stones song reference. You can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, well, you just might find you get what you need. My apologies for not singing that. Uh, Stacey Gaga, uh, again, excellent point, Chris Law. There should be changes with better policies 
uh, on overseeing for critical infrastructure. We need to strive for better stewardship. And finally, Stacey Gaga, there are a lot of issues with seasonal visitors, and maybe it's time to seriously consider implementing an authorized Sprout Lake Enforcement Authority to ensure our lake is protected from adverse effects from the impacts addressed tonight. I don't understand why this hasn't been officially done yet. So. Thank you. I'll ask again. Is there anybody that would like to speak for the first or second time or third time? <laughs> Seeing none, then I will call. I've read three times. Any? Okay. So. Okay. So please be advised that members of the board of directors cannot receive any new information related to these bylaws between the end of this hearing and making a final decision on the bylaw. If any board member does so, the hearing could be invalidated and would have to be held again. We put enough time in. So with that in mind, does anyone have any final comments? Yes, if you have a question, please come forward and state your name and address. And uh, send this, the question to myself as the chair. Through through the chair. My name is my name's Marianne Heck. Um, I have an interest in the property at 10581 Lakeshore Road. Um, the wharf has been expanded uh, recently, and they're talking about making the wharf even longer to accommodate more boats. I did some research, and I believe the length of the dock should be no more than 40 meters long and hold not more than four boats. I'd like to know if that's true and uh, if it can be regulated. Thank you. I'll ask staff question on that. So the, the ACRD does not have any dock regulations in, in place right now. As, as many of you know, there are uh, proposed dock regulations in the, uh, the draft updated zoning bylaw. But I will highlight that the, uh, the province regulates uh, the size, uh, extent, and width of docks on Crown Land. So if, if there is a dock that's, that's located on Crown Land, it has to meet their general regulations. If it's over and above that, um, or if it's a commercial use or a, a uh, group word use, and then uh, the province would require an application process to do that. So that that goes directly to the province. Okay, so then that's not that's not the case for this property. It, it can be as long as they want it to be. Uh, well, so the the province is the regulatory authority on the on the size extent and, and, okay. and width of the dock in that situation. Because that dock is um, my friend and I's property. It's the very first uh, property um, past the um, fire department, and the, the hotel's dock supersedes our dock. It goes way past, so I feel like they're infringing on our water rights. And I'd like to know if that would, if that is something that could be looked at or also regulated. Is that are they infringing on our waterfront? That is something I would certainly advise that you um, you speak with the, the provincial staff at the, the Ministry of Forest Office in town here about, uh, about what could be done. Okay. If, if all right. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, Chair recognizes Brian. Brian Zoden, 10745 Lakeshore Road. Uh, that dock, I believe, is on ENN right away. I'm not sure if that's provincial coverage. Yeah, so the um, uh, a portion of the, the lake bed that's, that's located east of the, the ENN land grant line is, is owned by both Mosaic, and the portion west of that line is owned by the province. I don't know if this, uh, I don't know the exact location of this dock. I know that the, the ENN land grant line is, is right in that area, but. Um, but again, that would be something that the, the provincial staff would have to advise on. Okay, well, it's not showing on the provincial uh, tax, property taxes as being on the provincial side. Uh, also, when will we get uh, 
notification or results of the director's voting. Staff can add to that. So the uh, the public hearing report and the minutes will be uh, presented to the board on April twelfth, which I uh, it should should be the second Wednesday in April. I believe that's April twelfth. Um, at at that meeting, the the board will be making uh, will be receiving the minutes and receiving the report and making a decision on either proceeding with third reading of the bylaw or uh, or defeating the bylaw or deferring it if they if they need more time. So that's the that's the meeting where that decision would, would take place. Thank you. Thank you. So I will we'll call again. Or A's. Okay. All right. So uh, I'll call for the first time. Are there any further representations on the bylaws? Hearing none, I call for a second time for any further representation on the bylaws. Calling for a third time. Are there any final representations on this bylaw? Hearing no further comments, I declare this meeting terminated so there's no more discussion on, on this. I want to thank everybody for a very respectful uh, public hearing and appreciate all your input. Um, thank you.